And we welcome you in to Blue Wahoo Stadium in beautiful Pensacola, Florida for some college football right here on Cox Sports Television. Will Kennedy and Jamie Smith with you for the home opener for the University of West Florida Argonauts tonight as they host Virginia Lynchburg here by the Bay. This is going to be an interesting ball game as the, as the UWF Argos come in 1-1 one and one on the season looking to get that second win. We come to the booth now. Jamie, this is going to be a matchup that we don't know a whole lot about the opponent in the Virginia Lynchburg Dragons. We do know a lot about the Argos, and it really should be a matchup where we get to see the best of this UWF team. Right, and I think you heard Coach Shinnick talk to it uh, in the pre in the pre show. So you have a team in Virginia Lynchburg who's been struggling over the past two games. I mean, they've been blown out by the two previous teams they've played. You don't want to give them any type of life early in this ball game to think that they have a shot. So to come out and get an early start is going to be is going to be vital for this UWF team. Kind of a situation like we saw last week in Rome, Georgia, in shorter uh, against shorter and. and UWF allows Shorter to hang around. It's 14, 14 and a half. You're giving them a little hope in life. Of course, then we're able to turn it on and score a bunch of points in the second half to really br break that game open. I would expect Coach Shinnick and company have talked about getting a fast start tonight, Jamie. Exactly, and you want to come out and get a fast start. And with a quarterback like Austin Reed, uh, you want to get him going early. So we all know how the game went last week uh, where we had the slow start and Shorter kind of crept back into the ball game. You can kind of feel us giving that momentum back to Shorter, but – in this game, you want to see Austin Reed and that offense come out and have a hot start, as well as the defense, too, come out and play and play assignment football. You know, you hate to take anybody for granted, and you don't do that. It's about how you play. It's not about how the other team plays necessarily. Do your best, and I think that Coach Shinnick is preaching that this week. This is the first in three straight home games here for this University of West Florida team, and then it gets tougher from here, of course, as you will bring in Mississippi College and then Delta State for some GSC play before getting a bye week, before facing some of the big dogs, your Valdosta States, exactly. your West Georgias and your West Dallas, exactly. Florida Tech in the back half of the season. This conference is super tough. We are about ready to get the team to run out on the field. By the way, Chancellor wins over my shoulder. Wave to the camera, Chancellor. He's in the booth there with us as well. One of the great moments here is, is that opportunity for this team to hit the field down there. Jamie, this is, this is a special moment for these guys. And the Argos take the field tonight. There you go, wearing the navy tops, the white pants with the white numbers on those blue tops and the white helmets. Good look for us tonight. We are with you for this one. Kickoff just around the corner. You are listening to and watching Argo football on the UWF Sports Network. University of West Florida Argonaut football on your view is brought to you by Visit Baton Rouge. It's not just the capital city, but the hub of all things Louisiana. And by Pan Air Federal Credit Union, enhancing lives through exceptional service, strength, and financial solutions. For more college and high school football coverage, check out yourview.com. What does Argo spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pre-game grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. Back in the stadium now, the two teams getting ready to kick this thing off. There's Joe Wintrick, the big left guard, and Dre Duncan, one of our favorites here for this UWF football team. Two teams on the field. They've gotten this field ready quickly, Jamie, because the Blue Wahoos baseball team that plays here, there's some fans around our viewing area may be familiar with their season. They made it to the playoffs, got knocked out, and allowed us. We thank, we don't, we don't want them to lose ever, but the opportunity for us to get in here and get this field set up, and it looks beautiful tonight. The stands have been put in the outfield, would normally be the baseball field, a chance for this to turn into a unique football venue. Yeah, now shout out to the grounds crew. I mean, they do a great job, and you can see the work that they put in. Uh, the field's not 100% yet, but the work that they've done to get it in playing shape and the amount of time that they have is, is, is really spectacular. Lynchburg will be wearing the white jerseys, white helmets tonight. They've got the dark pants on as they take the field in this one. 0-3 oh, coming into this game. This is a team, Jamie, that has, has struggled. They've lost the games 
early in the season by some pretty wide margins. Merrimack, Davidson uh, in the mix in some of those early games, giving up an average of 50 points a game against an offense that's hot right now. This could be a track meet, if you will, early on. We'll have to wait and see if it happens, but it has all the markings of one. It does, but they have a coach that can do it, an experienced coach, uh, the coach Bobby Rome, who played in North Carolina and uh, spent some time in the NFL as well. Uh, in Green, I believe he had, he had stints over in Green Bay and a couple other teams also. So UWF will kick this thing off. They'll be kicking into the home plate end of the field here. Colton Norris, the kicker, the kickoff guy with those Tennis ball, yellow shoes, tees this thing up, ready to get this football game underway. UWF and Virginia Lynchburg, and the ball is in the air here. Two men back deep to return this one. It'll fall in for a return. Rolling out of the end zone. Good coverage on the special teams as UWF flies down the field and stops Johnny Rimbert on the kick return. That'll set up the first possession of the game inside the 20. And I'm surprised he took that kick out. I thought maybe he was going to do the uh, fair catch thing, but there, but uh, Virginia Lynchburg coming out showing some aggressiveness early. Well, he was out of his end zone, so if he would have fair caught it, they would have been deep, 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 probably about the one or the two, but instead tackled about the 17 is where they'll mark it for the first possession of the game. This is a Virginia Lynchburg offense that has had different quarterbacks play early in the season. We don't know if that was because of injury or not, but uh, coming into this game, it looks like they'll start with Jeffrey Richardson, number 15 in there. Man, moving before the play. No flag was thrown. Two wideouts out to the left, and it's a quick throw out there to Rembert. Rembert is brought down quickly, so the guy who returned the kick takes the first pass of the game, a short gain on first down for the Dragons. Yeah, that time they get Rembert on the outside on a little out route there. Quick pass, quick action there. Not, not a lot of yardage, maybe four on the, on the play. Coach Schinnick was talking pregame. He does a chalk talk with some of the boosters you know, about an hour and a half before kickoff, and he was talking about this defense is starting to gel together as there's the snap, a little bit high, a little handoff, a jet sweep, and the defense had him, but then he picks up a few extra yards. That's Joshua Gray from the receiver position carrying the football, not quite to the first down as he gets knocked out of bounds about the 24, 23, 24-yard line. We take a look at the replay. That was a tough transition there as the snap was high. Oh, an opportunity there that just comes up a little bit short. If the defense could have made that play. Yeah, Sherrod Oliver makes him pay at the end of that run. Hard hit there. Third down here. A chance for this UWF defense to get off the field in this first possession if they can hold him. Third and about three. Just short of the 25-yard line. Low snap again. Another bad snap, but busted play. Rolling out. This ball's up in the air. He's got a receiver open down the side, but overthrown. So a hold for the defense. That had all the markings of a disaster if you're the Dragons. Somehow they come up with a punt instead of what could have been an interception, could have been a sack, could have been a fumble, anything could have happened. Yeah, and that's a great job I want to point out by Andre Duncombe. Andre Duncombe had a chance to go get the quarterback, Jeffrey Richardson, initially, but does a great job of tracking down the receiver who was basically playing that scramble drill with his quarterback, and Duncombe drops back in pressure. Now this is old school. This is Braden Taylor back to punt number 61. Left footer and the big fella, he's, he's a lineman, by trade, who also punts and kicks, rips this one off, and here you go, big return. Haven't seen one of these yet this year, but nice maneuvering to get out and get around the corner. And you know what? We, we've kind of talked about the different guys that can do this thing. That's Dimitri Birch, the wide receiver, bringing that kick back, and he, he's been dynamic in some of these first games, the potential to maybe take one to the house eventually. Yeah, we've seen Karan Ashley for majority of the time back there fielding those punts, but that time Birch gets his shot and uh, puts the Argos in great field position to start this drive. They had the two guys back there, Ashley and Birch, and, and they'll get good field position here inside the 50 as they'll start this drive in Dragon territory at about the 45. Austin Reed in there. Anthony Johnson on his hip. Reed scrambles around. He's got a man down the seam. It's Tate Latio, but instead the defender comes across and picks this one off. Heck of a play in the defensive backfield. For the Dragons, and I know that is a throw that Austin Reed would love to have back. That is Marvin Grunchy with the INT. Yeah, had a wide man open there in Taylor Teo, just missed him. We're going to take a break. You're watching UWF football on the UWF Sports Network. Success isn't measured by fame or fortune. It's measured by time and the amount of times you influence others to be better, to transform something small into something spectacular. 
Success is measured by the impact you make. What impact will you make? The University of West Florida. No limits. What does Argo Spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pre-game grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. Com. Sandra, help. Back with you here at Blue Wahoo Stadium. We didn't even get a chance to set Jamie Smith, the UWF offense, and just that quick on the first play for them, an interception. So that'll set up the Dragons of Virginia Lynchburg just outside their own 10-yard line. We'll, we'll call it as good as a punt, although that's not what Pete Shinnick and company wanted. So back on offense for the Virginia Lynchburg Dragons. Richardson rolling out, and they're going to get to him. Dre Duncan coming off that corner. And that's something we haven't seen a lot of, that good pressure as helmets go flying and everything. Yeah, Dre Duncan, just too much for his man right there on the boundary side. Does a great job of getting rid of the, of the big guy and deep, or deep, his he, helmet comes off of he, the quarterback. He yes. flew around that left tackle. He, it, it, was, it was an easy route for him to get around uh, the big, you know what, I'm trying to find his number. That may be Dwayne Harris at left tackle, and he may be wearing a different number, but he got around it fast. And really the pocket was collapsing as everyone was coming to meet at the quarterback, the old let's meet at the quarterback rush. So that'll put him even deeper in a hole. Loss of several on that play. Have to see where the ball is spotted. You, again, unique venue here, and it's a personal foul. Called on the defense. That's going to hurt. After a great play, you get a personal foul at the end that's going to obviously keep the first down and move them out of the shadow of their own goal post. Yeah, that hurts there. I'm not sure who they called that on that time. When you do see the helmet come flying off, yeah, you wonder if it's a face mask or you wonder if there was a contact to the head by a defensive player. And we'll see. That'll put the ball. We'll see where they spot it here. They go back to the original line of scrimmage and then mark it off the 15. So that'll move it outside, just outside the 25. So a couple mistakes early, and that was kind of one of the themes heading into this game is you're playing a, a team like Virginia Lynchburg on three. You want to be sharp. You want to limit your mistakes. We've seen an interception and a big penalty already here. So first and 10 now from about the 26 for the Dragons. Quick handoff inside. He bounces it to the outside. The pursuit is there as they stretch him to the boundary. He's going to pick up a couple yards before finally diving in there to make a tackle at the end was David Richardson. Yeah, David Richardson finally brings down the guy, but they do a good job. They get a jet sweep going to their running back on that play. Looks like uh, Thomas, is that Thomas Newman? Number seven, carry? yeah, Thomas. Yeah, they Thomas just call him Newman T. T. Carry. Newman on the carry. And he's going to pick up about five or six to bring up a second and four. So full backfield here. Two guys out wide to the right. Man goes in motion. And it's a little quick screen out to the outside. This play has some potential. But, wow, coming to lay the hit is DeMarco Artis. Big number 33. That's and a good pursuit on that play. Yeah, that's a big size difference there. <laughs> DeMarco Artis, he was probably well over 225 pounds, comes in and delivers a blow, lets him know who he is. Lays the lick. So a gain of two or three on the play, that's going to bring up third and a long one or a short two, depending on the spot. We'll call it third and two. Ball on the 34-yard line. Empty backfield. Three receivers out to the left, two to the right. Another high snap. Time for the quarterback. Finally, he gets flushed out. He's got a receiver, but it's dropped. The throw was a little bit low. He had the man. He had probably a first down on the play. Rembert just can't make the grab. Yeah, he did a great job of scrambling to his left, buying time. Uh, Richardson, an athletic quarterback there, just not able to haul the ball in there for Rembert. If I'm Richardson, the quarterback from Virginia Lynchburg, I'm having a discussion with my center when we get over to the sideline. Yeah, they've been a couple um, a couple fumbled snaps there. High snaps, low snaps, all the snaps have been in play. Braden Taylor back there again. 
to punt this thing away. The lefty gets this thing up. He kind of reminds me of Sebastian Janikowski size-wise. They're going to let this one bounce and then be down. Not the greatest of kicks, but another chance for this UWF offense is we'll keep it here. And they get a, they get a second chance. I'm sure Pete Shinnick and the other coaches, Caleb Nobles, have talked with Austin Reed over on the sideline about what he saw in that thing. He had Tate Latio down, down that seam and just didn't quite get the ball far enough and allowed the defender to come in and pick that thing off. Yeah, on that interception, Tate Latia was actually running the stop and go route, and he ran it to perfection. Reed just didn't see him in time and tried to force him there late. And when you force it in there late, you usually have to pay for it. You see the numbers. Austin Reed had himself a week last week, threw for 364 yards and four touchdowns, ran for two as well, so six total touchdowns as we take the snap here. Reed rolling out. To his left, and he finds a receiver down the field. It's going to be enough for a first down, something he does exceptionally well. And he finds one of the tight ends, Shakir Jackson, it looks like, with a nice catch. We don't see tight end catches often, Jamie. No, no, they <laughs> don't use this tight end system often, but it looks like that was actually 88 Tate Latio in on the catch. Oh, that was Tate. That was Tate. I couldn't, couldn't quite see the number. Tate gets the catch, and one of the favorite targets for Austin Reed. Something Austin does exceptionally well is roll to his left and throw back across the body. Very accurate. I think on the season you saw 61%, but last week threw for about 69% accuracy. This time he's got three receivers out to his right. Single back behind him is Anthony Johnson. So a big first down to get this drive rolling after the interception on the first play for this offense from scrimmage. Johnson takes the handoff, a delayed draw. He's got to pick up some positive yardage, and then a shoestring tackle brings him down. And they run that misdirection play with Johnson. They like to do that, fake the defense to the left side there, and Johnson gets the ball coming back the other way. And uh, he does a great job of picking up about four or five on that play before it's tripped up. Put that left foot in the ground, look for the hole, and go for it. This is a young man from Pace who played quite a bit in a ro three-man rotation last year. He's really coming, and you can feel him getting into shape. He had an injury in the fall camp, but he looks good now. Two receivers out to the left side, single on the right. Johnson gets the handoff again, and positive yardage again. Going to pick up another UWF first down. And they're continuing to feed him. Last week, Coach Shinnick said this is the first time we had 100% healthy Anthony Johnson, and uh, they're, they're, they're continuing to feed him this week. You want to see that. Want to get your running game on track, especially in a game like this. It's important. Coming up to make that tackle, number 18, jumping in the play, who's not on my roster. I see number 18, I look down, and I don't see a number 18 matching up. We'll, we'll have to work with this a little bit. There have been several different versions of the Lynchburg roster. We can tell you that it's Austin Reed taking the snap, going to Johnson again on the same play we saw on first down. Johnson this time breaks to the outside. He's going to pick up the first down and then some. Kind of the first big gain run we've seen this season. We've been waiting for one of those, Jamie. Yeah, and Johnson gives you your first one there of this game. Does a great job of putting that foot in the ground on the misdirection play and makes the guy miss in space, and Johnson does the rest. Let's give props to Joe Wintrick, the left guard number 61. Pulled on that play, and you saw him throw that lead block out in front that sprung that thing. Big gain on the play. It's going to move UWF into Virginia Lynchburg territory about the 20 yard line, so almost in the red zone. Here we go. Another running back checks into the game. This time it is Jaden Gardner taking the Argos inside the red zone on the first down carry. Yeah, and Jaden Gardner, the smaller back, but probably one of the more faster and more more fast twitch muscle type of running backs that UWF has, uh, runs it in there for a decent gain of about four or five on that play. Austin Reed, a red shirt freshman. He's out of the state of Florida. I believe the Fort Lauderdale area, and then he went to Southern Illinois, just said it wasn't the fit for him. You heard him in the pregame on our radio show, and he's found his home, it looks like, here in Pensacola, Florida with UWF. Takes the snap, hands off again to Gardner. Gardner dances in the hole and puts the head down, and he's going to pick up another few yards. Close to the first down, but not quite there. It, will, it may look like we'll have to see what the spot is as a player has to come off the field after losing a helmet. They're going like to give him the first down. First down. Yeah. Yep. Good job by Jaden Gardner. Does a great job of hiding behind those big old linemen. It looks like maybe Mike Dilla was leading the way on that one. Big Mike Dilla. This is some big, there's some big boys on this line. And the offensive line, we mentioned, it's a group that's been together for quite a while. Lots of seniors and, and veterans who have played a lot of downs on this group. Maybe not the biggest line, especially in the interior, that you're going to find in the GSC, but a solid group. Here we go. First down. And goal to go from the 10. Reed rolls out to his left, looks downfield. He's got a man. It's Rodney Coates. Coates with the catch, dances inside, spins, and cuts it inside the five. They'll bring him down about the three. And that's a great job. They get Austin Reed this time rolling out to his left. And like you mentioned earlier, Will, he does a great job when he rolls out to his left. And this time has the option to throw to Taylor Teal or Rodney Coates in the field and chooses to go to Coates, and he does the rest. 
when you're running effectively, you saw the play fake there, sucks the defense in and opens up some space. So the running game is kind of setting up a couple of shifts on the offensive line. We've got a, a few new players checking in. Three wide receivers out to the right. Single back in the backfield with Austin Reed, the quarterback. Second down and goal to go from the three. The handoff and in for the touchdown, Anthony Johnson. Touchdown, Argos. Just power football, Jamie Smith. That, you know, take a shot down the field on the first drive of the game. It didn't work out. The next drive, just ground and pound, if you will. And that's the same running play that we've seen three times prior to that touchdown. They run the misdirection there again with Johnson and a wide open hole that time. And I'm pretty sure, Mia, you could have ran into that one. He was two yards deep in the end zone before anybody made contact. So the three-yard touchdown run sets up the PAT attempt for Austin Williams, the kicker, number one out of California. The kick is up, and it is good. And the Argos are on top of this thing, 7-0 here in the first quarter with 8.05 to play. You're watching Argo football on the UWF Sports Network. What does Argo spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pregame grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. Back with you at Blue Wahoo Stadium, Will Kennedy and Jamie Smith on the UWF Sports Network and Cox Sports TV, also on the radio with ESPN Pensacola. 7-0 Argos out in front of this thing. The second drive of the game for this UWF offense results in a touchdown, and it was a good drive moving down the field. Eight plays, 66 yards, three minutes and 51 seconds of possession. And you love to see this, this Argo offense get, roll, get rolling, Jamie, as Colton Norris is set to kick this thing off. Punches one up high in the air. This one it will be returnable as well. The Dragons, Joshua Gray bringing it out, dancing around, finally getting chopped down about the 15, 16-yard line. Good coverage again from this Argo special teams. Yeah, doing a great job. Joshua Smiley comes in and finishes, off, finishes him off there. Looks like Lynchburg will get the ball around the 16-yard line. So we've, we've seen this Lynchburg offense twice now, and they've, they've got some things to kind of clean up. Some of the snaps have, have been a little difficult, but we do like what we see so far. If you're a Lynchburg fan from this quarterback, Jeffrey Richardson, Sherman Brown played in the first game of the season. Richardson has kind of taken over and played the rest of the way mostly. He's in there again, three wideouts to his left. The handoff goes into the hole. It's T. Newman. Newman pushing Hard, but he's only going to come up with about a yard. Nice job in the interior of that UWF defense. Yeah, Newman just had a tough sled in that time. It's just a lot of big guys that they're up front for UWF. And I think that was maybe number 33 on the on the play there for UWF, which is number. DeMarco Artis is in there, but you see a, a whole host of guys getting in there. Hard to see down at the bottom who came up with that tackle. We'll call it a team tackle. Share, share the love. Share the wealth on that one. That will bring up second and nine. As this defense, you can feel the aggressiveness. They are really flowing to the football well. Another high snap, and this one will be whistled dead before it even starts. Yeah, it looks like a false start on the play for VL VUL. Aiden Sweat motioning back to his sideline that the penalty is going to be on Lynchburg. It is a false start. It will back it up five yards. Jamie, Coach Shinnick was saying when he was talking to some fans in a chalk talk before the game that he, you know, he's got some guys – that sat out last year, red shirted. He's got a bunch of new guys, that, like artists that are in there, and 
and Ferguson, you know, Chandler Ferguson. So you got about nine guys on defense that really this is just their third time playing together as a unit. They're really starting to, to feel themselves and find their way. Right, and you can see them start to gel. Here we go. Second down now and 14. Richardson out of the gun. Three receivers out to his left, and he steps up in the pocket. He's going to tuck this thing up and run. Makes the defender miss, and finally is hit and brought down. And that, that was you know some nice dancing around before Trent Archie could get to him. Yeah, that was a decent little scramble job of Richardson there in the pocket. Goes downfield, goes through his progressions there, figures out there's no one there, and uses his feet to pick up about six on the play. Uh, DeMarco Artis is not going to like that film when he looks at it later as he kind of got broke down. He wasn't right in the position to make the tackle, and Richardson made him look a little silly there. Single back, moving out quickly out of the backfield. Richards is looking downfield. He's got a receiver. That's going to be enough for a first down. Flag is thrown on this play. Breaks the tackle. That is something we saw last week. And then down the field, finally, nope, not brought down. This one is going to go a long way for Saeed Sidibi. In fact, knocked out inside the five. But like we said, there is a flag down back here about the 20-yard line. We'll have to see what the call is. Yeah, we do have a flag. You have to wonder if that's kind of one of those rub pick pick uh, flags over here in the, the, uh, as, as Joshua Smiley dropped in the coverage. The running back came out of the backfield in motion right at the snap and was kind of in that area. Yeah, legal, legal man downfield on that play. So one of the offensive linemen fired downfield before the throw was made. And that's the, that's the danger, Jamie, when you have a quarterback who's in motion all the time, as Richardson is, that your offensive lineman released before he's thrown the ball. Yeah, and you just have to be more disciplined as a line. And it's tough, like you mentioned, because, because the quarterback in Richardson is a very athletic guy, but you have to be disciplined enough to know when your quarterback is going to scramble or when he's going to pass the ball. I can tell you this, that UWF defensive coordinator Darian Doolin is not going to be happy, though, with the tackling or lack thereof when that film is broken down later, despite the penalty on the play, because we saw that last week. Shorter had a long touchdown pass with a missed tackle that really cost the Argos in the first half. Yeah, I'm sure he'll have a couple strong words for those guys in <laughs> film study next week. But, you know, still time still time to make the film better. Uh, still a lot of time in this ballgame. It's, it's a process. It's, it's always a work in, in progress. There's always something to clean up if you're a football coach. That penalty super costly because it would have set up the Dragons inside the UWF 5. Instead, it backs them up, and you're looking at third and 10 now from your own 16 or 15. Two receivers out to each side, single back for Richardson. Takes the snap, no pressure. He's got a clean pocket and then completes a pass, but coming up to make a big hit, you do not want to see. If I'm a wide receiver, the last thing I want to see is that big a fella coming at me. Yeah, Andre Duncan, just, he's dropping back and cutting coverage initially. Well, look at Daryl Wilson get in on this too at the end. He kind of comes flying in. <laughs> <laughs> right at the end of that play. Yeah, and big man Darrell Wilson, about <laughs> 335. But Duncan does a great job of dropping back in coverage, settling in on that seam. So nowhere to go, and he basically sees the guy cross right in front of him. Gain of a five will force another punt. Dre Duncan is really the heart and soul, the, the leader, the guy who's been here a long time with this defense. Here's the punt. Pressure comes. Taylor gets this thing away. It's going to bounce, and it'll end up being down. Really no chance for return. The Argos will have the ball again. Five minutes to go here in the first quarter. We will take a break here on the UWF Sports Network as the Argos lead this one 7-0. For those who sweat in determined pursuit and those who meet the morning with a firm handshake and a smile, and breathe between stages of unwavering effort. Andrews Institute, for those who move. Hey, who are you? Oh, hey, Jeff, I'm a car thief. What? I'm here to steal your car because, well, that's my job. What? 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 <laughs> it happens. So get off stage. I'd be better protected from mayhem, like me. Mayhem is everywhere. So get an Allstate agent. In Pensacola, call Melissa Keener. You can't stop it. That undeniable charge. So bright. So loud. It rips through the clutches of mediocrity. It breaks down walls. 
blazes past old ways of thinking. It's creativity. Pure electric energy. What will you do with it? The University of West Florida. No limits. Guys Pizza on Davis Highway. This is Pete. We're back with you here. UWF football on Cox Sports TV. Look at the last drive. A nice mix of running, especially strong in that running game. Austin Reed not having to carry too much of the load here. That led to the 7-0 lead that we have, and here they are on offense again, and this time Reed to Latio, and that does not happen every day. Tate Latio just couldn't hang on to that thing. As Reed fired one in there, would have been close to a first down. Yeah, you don't see that. Tate Latio, one of the more sure-handed receivers in this in this receiving core. Uh, Latio's actually only 132 receptions, or actually only about a couple yards away from uh, Anton, Antoine Griffin's all-time receiving record. Young program, th those, you know, you kind of can get records broken at a, at a pretty quick clip. So this drive starts relatively deep in their own end for UWF, and an uh, incompletion on first down brings up second and ten. Throw in on this drive to get things started. They go back to Latio, kind of juggles that one, but he does come up with the catch. Nice job getting some positive yardage right back there on second down. Yeah, I, I like that. You go right back to the guy after exa this drop Exactly, one. and you know Latio's uh, going to catch the next one. A sure-handed guy, just a quick in route there, a comeback route by Latio, and he picks up about uh, six on that play. Six or seven. Looks like we're at third and three officially on the scoreboard here. So that's what you got to do when you when you have. You take that shot on first down. If it doesn't come up, you come back and get, get some positive yards. Very manageable down here. These group of receivers, you're going to see guys rotate in. And this is a set we haven't seen much of. Look, everybody bunched in near the line of scrimmage. Latio goes in motion. Quick handoff to Johnson. Johnson finds some room, gets through the hole. He picks up the first down and then some. That could have been a touchdown with one more man missing. Yeah, a great hole opened up. Uh, they get the eyes going. They have Latio going in motion, fakes the jet sweep, and gives Johnson the ball in the inside handoff. And Johnson, just an elusive back, is able to gain about 12 on that play. Yeah, gain of about 10 to 12. That's going to bring up a first down as the ball moves out near the 50-yard line. Spotted just a little bit short of the 50. So first down again. Argo's on the move again. Single back in the backfield. Quick out to Coates. Coates makes a man miss. Shoestring tackle. Another helmet comes flying off, and then he's going to get dragged down from behind by a couple of dragon defenders and a loss on the play. Got past the initial guy, couldn't get past the next two or three. Yeah, just had a host of defenders from Lynchburg coming in, was able to make the first guy missed, and just too many guys for Coates that time. Robert McMillian in number 26 on that tackle, and Coates disappointed with that one. As he, you know, if you can get past that first guy and get right up the field, you got a chance to make a play or two. Really impressed with this offensive line so far, running the football, but also with their ability to protect Austin Reed. We'll see if they move him out of the pocket again, as they've done a couple times early. Single back. Receivers out to each side. Reed with the handoff up the middle. Big hole. And dancing through and making something happen is Jervon Newton. So we've seen our third running back in the game already. They each bring a little something different, Jamie. Exactly. And this time you get your first action of Jervon Newton tonight. This time they pull the tight end going with 11 personnel. They pull Jackson to open up a big hole for Newton. And he gains a first down for the yeah, Argos. Picks up, picks up that lost yardage and then some to move the ball to about the 40 of Virginia Lynchburg. So a gain of about 12 on the play, 12 to 13 for Javon Newton. Newton stays in the game with Reed in the backfield. Receivers on each side of the formation. This time, Newton bounces to the outside. Got some running room. He's going to pick up another first down. There is a flag down on the play, but you like his speed to the outside. We'll yeah, see. Newton that time able to beat out everybody to, the, everybody to the outside. We do have a flag, though. See what that call is. Newton, 5'11", 195 out of Clearwater, Florida. And it really is that a bit taller back. You've got a mixture with Johnson. They're going to get Karan Ashley with a hold on that one. Back that thing up. So you hate to see that. A play that goes for a first down and some positive yardage will get backed up and put your offense in a little bit of a hole here. As UWF has moved the ball out of their own end into Virginia Lynchburg territory. But there's, a, there's another mistake that hurts. And we saw that late last week in the second half when the second team offense was in against Shorter, a series of penalties that – Stalled some drives out. That's not what Coach Shinnick's wanting to see. No, and definitely not the start that he wanted to come out and have in this ball game. But uh, that would explain also why he was able to beat everyone to the outside and yeah. play the hold. So they'll be backed up about five five yards on this. It'll be first and long. 
Here we go. First and a, a long way to go. Reed with the man. It's Tate Latio in the middle of the field. Latio with the catch and able to spin out of the first tackle. Gets a bunch of that yardage back as the ball is marked down a little shy of the 35. So, what you know, another positive play after a penalty to come back and pick up a big chunk of that yardage back. They're going to pick up probably 15 on that one, 15 to 16 yards. Yeah, he finds Latio in that seam. Tate does a lot of damage in that slot position as a receiver, and it's tough for that nickelback, you know, to recover a receiver like Latio, and he makes he makes Lynchburg pay on that play. Here we go. Second down now and about six or seven. Quick handoff inside. The hole closes quickly this time, but staying on his feet is Gardner and trying to dance through, but he's not going to get much. Host of guys in there from Lynchburg. On that tackle, Grunchy's in there again. The man that had the interception on the first possession of this game for UWF. Yeah, just not a lot of running room that time for Gardner. One of the smaller backs, you would think he would be able to just hide behind those old linemen. <laughs> and he did up to a point, but just a lot of defenders for Lynchburg just enclosed. The size him. of this Lynchburg team is really across their defensive line. Got a couple big boys in there. And we'll see what happens here as they've rotated back in. It's Newton running back again. Two receivers out to Austin Reed's left. Short side, a single receiver. Reed steps up in the pocket and ends up missing Tate Latio and throwing it into the ground. Not quite sure where that pass was supposed to go, but that's going to bring up a fourth down. Yeah, he had Ken Chanel, number seven, uh, in coming in motion in that slot res receiver position. He, he gave a look to Chanel. I maybe thought he was going to go to him, but chooses to go to Latio on that out route. Just so not able to find him. This is going to bring a field goal attempt. Coach Pete Chinnick is going to bring out Austin Williams, and we're probably looking at 52, a 52-yard attempt for, for Williams, who missed a 41-yarder last week in his only field goal attempt of the season. We'll have to see how this one goes. And what a confidence boost yeah. this would be for Williams, who's been struggling so far in the season. 57, officially. The snap is good. The kick is up, and it's a little bit short, and there's going to be a return out of the end zone. This may have a chance to be a big play. That It's Rembert, Johnny Rembert, number one. And, yeah, he's going to dance out, take this ball across the 50 into UWF territory or near, near the 50. He may have gotten just short. Wow, that kind of turns around. When you, when you have that happen, when you try a 57-yarder, I think back to that uh, Auburn-Alabama play in the Iron Bowl when Alabama tried that field goal and it, it was returned all the way for a touchdown to win that game. You don't see that very often, but when you do and you get that opportunity and a man is back there under the goalpost and you look at it here, you're asking a field goal unit to try to cover basically a kick return, a recipe for disaster sometimes, Jamie. Right, yeah, we've seen that a couple years ago. You mentioned it with the kick six, and uh, Auburn was really celebrating that night, but Alabama could do nothing. Here we go, first down. Quick one out to the outside. It's going to pick up a couple yards before finally being forced out of bounds. So Lynchburg has, you know, kind of dodged a couple bullets here early and in this game, 7-0 with about 20 seconds left here in the first quarter, and they're going to pick up a gain of about two on first down as T. Newman takes that ball for a short game. Yeah, they continue to lean on Newman tonight as he's had about eight carries. Bulk or, of the offensive carries. work, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's got a, a bunch of carries for, for Lynchburg tonight. Newman with two yards on that one. This one, there it is. There's the snap over the quarterback's head. This thing is going to be big trouble as it's finally fallen on back around the 25. So that, I don't know if that comes up as a sack, but that is not what you want to have happen. We'll take a break here as the quarter winds down. 7 nothing is the score. You're watching UWF football on the UWF Sports Network. What does Argo Spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pre-game grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. Look at that. Five glorious inches of Whataburger. Fresh 100% beef stacked high with melted cheese and fresh cut veggies. But what if it's too much fresh beef? Stacked too high with too much melted cheese and too many fresh cut veggies. Well, we have a four inch burger like a lot of other places. We just call it a junior. Good thing there's a burger made just for you. 
Good thing there's Whataburger. You got me falling hard, sweet baby. You got me falling hard for you. It's you. I felt this way before. You know it's you. It's you. You got me more and more. Oh, you got me falling hard. We're back here at Blue Wahoo Stadium in Pensacola, Florida. Will Kennedy and Jamie Smith with you on Cox Sports TV and the UWF Sports Network. 7-0 game here as we start the second quarter. And, and Jamie, this has been a, not the start you probably want if you're Coach Shinnick and company. You'd like to be a little further ahead. Well, you just want to have a faster start. And you know what kind of team you are. But you know what kind of team Virginia Lynchburg is as well. But you, you just want to, and we said it at the beginning of the show, you just want to, it's how we play, not who we play. Mistakes. We've seen a missed field goal from a 57-yard attempt. We've seen some penalties thrown in and an interception on the first drive, which really was a shot down the field. Um, you know, Austin Reed loved to have that throw back again. But here we go to start the second quarter. In a hole, third and 26 for Lynchburg. Richardson drops back and just chunks one up in the air on a screen play. That could have been a disaster, and the ball does come out at the end. It's a fumble. Couldn't see who came up with it there, but there's also laundry back on the field as well. Looks like number 10. For UWF, I'm even Demarie Givens coming up with that. I'm even surprised the Lynchburg receiver came down with that ball. It looked like let's see this Richardson thing. Just That's a it jump ball. There. That's just a jump ball. Rimber got it and then he lost it. I don't know. Was it punched out from behind? Dre may have gotten in there. Duncombe may have gotten in there and popped that thing loose. Yeah, heck of a catch by Rimber to even come down with that ball. So the penalty is on Lynchburg. It is declined. So you get a turnover. So somebody, if you don't, if you haven't seen this before, and it's going on on the sideline now down below us. There is a turnover shield in Argo colors. It's you know Jason and the Argonauts. If you're not familiar with the University of West Florida and where the Argy mascot and the Argonaut mascot comes from, so you know those explorers had a shield. They were kind of Greek warriors. And so if you get a turnover, you get to sign that shield and you get to hold it up. Everybody's doing something now, right, Jamie? Yeah, turnover chains, yeah. all this stuff. Yeah, you can credit Miami down there in starting that whole trend with the turnover chain. So the missed field goal and the big return does not hurt the Argos. They will take over and get the football right back in the Virginia Lynchburg end of the field here. Reed back to pass. Looking downfield. He's got a man open that's underthrown, but breaking back on the ball and making the catch is Quentin Randolph. Q. Fighting with the defender, but he had already made the catch as he throws the ball up in the air. Q gets excited, by the way. Yeah, Q's Quentin a very Randolph. energetic player <laughs> and does a great job in adjusting his body to come that come back to the ball. Reed, that body, that ball is a little underthrown, but Randolph, a very athletic guy, is able to do the things he does and come back and make a great catch. Quentin had that big 51-yard touchdown last week, and they come up with a huge one here, so that'll set up inside the Virginia Lynchburg 10-yard line, back in the red zone, three receivers out to the right. It's a handoff, and in for the touchdown. Touchdown Argos making it look easy is Jaden Gardner on the eight-yard touchdown run. And that's going to be Gardner's first touchdown of the year. Like I said, mentioned earlier, the more than the more faster backs, and he just beats everyone to the, to the end zone here on the outside. Does a great job, and Gardner in for the score. This offensive line has really done a heck of a job here early in this game, opening up that running game. So the Argos make quick work of this drive. Two plays, and you're in for a touchdown. Williams on for the PAT down in the bay end. We'll see if this ball ends up in the water. It's over the net. That may be. If you're in a kayak out there, please bring that back. Or maybe you get to keep it. I'm not quite sure what the rules are. But whatever the rules are, the Argos now lead 14-0 after the quick strike touchdown. Jamie, that's what you want to see. Yeah, I mean, a great job coming back. Offense, strong drive. Uh, was able to come down the field, had an explosive play in the Quentin Randolph catch, and Gardner puts the puts the exclamation point on the end of the drive. Yeah, that, you know, when you do drive summaries, it's easy to do that one because it's long play and a short touchdown run, and there you are. You're right back in it again with a touchdown. So, you know, this game is 14 nothing. and you, you certainly feel like the Argos are in control of this thing. There are all those things that we've been talking about through the broadcast that you want to clean up, whether it's penalties, turnovers, or just some of the mistakes that you're making. Not going to say that, you know, that Virginia Lynchburg isn't in this game at just 14-0, but we're seeing some struggles, and we're starting to see a little bit of unraveling on this offense, the snap over the head, the fumble on the, the third and 26 screen pass. 
Yeah, but you you mentioned the the, the the problems with the snap earlier, and you mentioned the quarterback it's gonna happen. They yeah, should, you they should have had, and you called it. And uh, you seen the over the head snap that uh, that last play, and that calls Virginia Lynchburg. Yeah, you definitely feel like that's going to be one that you know it's going to be a problem at some point. It really cost them there. That was a 39 yarder on the throw to Quentin Randolph from Austin Reed, and then turn around and run it right in. So that drive goes for 46 yards in two plays. Not much time gone off the clock. 14-16 left here in the first half, and it's 14-0 UWF. Colton Norris on to kick this thing. Gets into this one. Side foots that deep, and I think I realize what's happening. The wind is blowing one way and not the other across this field because he couldn't get it into the end zone when going towards the home plate end. But in the right. outfield end, that ball sails. Yeah, and that's taking nothing away from Colton Norris because he has probably the strongest leg on this team. Uh, but sure got into that one. I thought for a moment it might have been going over the left field, the left field wall here. <laughs> Into the bay. You know what? And if I'm Austin Reed, the quarterback, I'm going to go back and look at that and say I was throwing into the wind on that first throw of the game exactly. for the interception. So the Argos, really, you see it on the screen, 75 yards rushing and just basically a quarter and, a, and a, some change and two touchdowns on the ground. This is that ground game you've been wanting to see. Here's Virginia Lynchburg starting from their own 25-yard line, first down as they've got receivers out to each side. It's a quick screen pass to T. Newman, but not much going there. Some Argos are in on that play. That's what you want to see. There you see big Josh Smiley flowing to the football, getting in on that tackle as well. And also in on that play, looked like Gail Laurent. Yeah, and their Argos are starting in that 3-4 defense, that base defense, as they usually do. And with the athletes that they have, they can just swarm to the football. And you see Smiley and Laurent in on that tackle. Linebacker pursuit, crucial on a play like that. They make it happen. That brings up second and eight or seven, depending. And look, I'm scrambling around, nowhere to go. Richardson is rolling. He finally finds a man. That was just a fire drill. Escaping a tackle, and that's, you know, one of the areas you want to clean up is – Sherrod Oliver just can't bring down the receiver there. Finally forced out of bounds. It's Rembert again. I got to imagine, Jamie, that some of these Virginia Lynchburg players are going to get tired because we're really seeing the same guys on the football, whether it's Newman, Rembert, Richardson, every play. Right, and this is just a scramble drill like you mentioned, Will. And uh, Rembert is able to make Oliver miss in the first tackle, but just comes up a little bit short. It'll bring up third and two. Third and two, a chance to extend the drive or to get off the field depending. Here comes the pressure. Quick out there, but it's not going to be caught as he was trying to throw out into the flat, and that's going to bring up the fourth down. Good job of bringing the pressure. Coach Darian Doolin dialing up some pressure right there, and it and it forces the change of possession. So we'll, we'll see another punt, see the big fella come on and kick this thing again. Yeah, Richardson, when you're scrambling around and you try to throw the ball back across the other side of the field, if your feet aren't set, you just can't get enough on it. Yeah, and great job by Coach Doolin that time. He says we're going to bring pressure to Richardson instead of just dropping back in coverage, and uh, Richardson just not able to get his feet set on that throw. Ray Shawn Gaines just couldn't come up with that one there. Cannot hear the official here. They're resetting the clock, I think. That's going to force the punt. Give an opportunity. This may be one you get a chance to return if you're the University of West Florida. Karan Ashley is out there, as is Kenneth Chanel, back to take this punt. The ball comes Chanel's way, end over end. Good kick, and it's going to angle out of bounds and set UWF at about their own 30 for their next possession. You are watching Argo football here on the UWF Sports Network. For those who sweat in determined pursuit, and those who meet the morning with a firm handshake and a smile, and breathe between stages of unwavering effort. Andrews Institute, for those who move. What's even better than going to a UWF football game? Going with all your friends. Decks are available for groups between 25 and 200 people. All group decks come with a UWF football game ticket, food, and soft drinks. It's great for company outings, group functions, birthday parties, and youth groups. Prices start as low as $25 per person. Call 850-474-2746 for more information or to book your deck today. Hey, who are you? Oh, hey, Jeff, I'm a car thief. What? 
I'm here to steal your car because, well, that's my job. What? 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 <laughs> it happens. So get off stage. I'd be better protected from mayhem, like me. Mayhem is everywhere. So get an Allstate agent. In Pensacola, call Melissa Keener. We're back at Blue Wahoo Stadium. Will Kennedy and Jamie Smith with you on Cox Sports TV, the UWF Sports Network, and ESPN Pensacola on the radio. Simulcasting this game. So pictures, sound, music from the UWF band in the house as it's well. Everything. We got 12.59 left to play here in the first quarter of this one. The Argos back on offense. Really impressed with the running game so far. Anthony Johnson has done a heck of a job. Five carries for 47 yards here. Yeah, really leaning on that running game early. We'll see if they continue to go with it. Johnson is the single back in this 11 personnel. Johnson dancing through another hole, picking up another positive gain on first down. And really, when you can move the ball four or five yards on first down and set yourself up like this, just opens up the play calling for Coach Pete Schenick. Exactly, and you're right. It all goes off of that running game. And in the past, when the, when the running game has really been one-dimensional, and you can remember when Chris Schwartz were he, was here, they could really just load up the box. But now that you have so much and so many athletes, uh, it's, a, it's just a variety of things you can do. This drive started on the 30. They give Johnson four on that carry. So second now and six. Johnson the single back. Two receivers out to the right on the far side of the field. And Reed's got one of them. Nice quick throw down into that seam. Austin Reed with the strong arm, and he finds Evan Mitchell out there. Evan Mitchell does a great job. They run a, a combination route over there, and Mitchell runs an in route, and Reed finds him on time. Great throw, and uh, that'll pick up the first down for the offense. That'll move the sticks, and we've seen quite a bit of that. And they, Just look at that comfortable in the pocket, plenty of time. Throw a little high, but the big fellow, Evan Mitchell, goes up and gets that thing. That is the benefit of having some large receivers. Mitchell is 6'2", 185 out of Fort Walton Beach. So the ball out near the 50 now. 16-yard completion on that one. Another run inside, another positive gain on first down. Moving the ball forward as the Argos are on the prowl again. And they continue to lean heavy on that run. Another inside handoff, and we continue to see UWF run after run. I mean, this is probably the most I've seen them run the ball in any game in yeah. the past couple of years. This is, you know, Pete Shinnick is, is an offensive kind of coach, you know, offensive mastermind, if you will. Loves the passing game, loves to get lots of guys out and throw to a lot of different receivers. I think we're seeing a little bit of Coach Steve Sonia, the offensive line coach, of his uh, philosophy mixing in here. Here we go, three receivers out to the left of this formation. Johnson is the running back in the backfield. Another delayed handoff inside. Johnson dances through, and he's going to pick up another first down on that carry. Yeah, and they obviously have seen something in this VUL defense that has given them the courage to run so much. And Johnson's able to find another hole in the defense and able to pick up yet another first down. I know it's, it's one of those phrases you hear in football a lot, but uh, he's running downhill. He truly is. And I know all these UWF running backs, just the style of the runs that are being designed up, they're dancing in the hole, waiting for the hole to open, picking a hole, but then when they go, they're going. Johnson goes for five again. Five on first down, picks up more, more than that on the second. We've got moving the sticks one more time. This time, Reed's got a man. It's Birch. Out of the side, or is that Johnson? No, it's Birch. Dimitri Birch catches the pass. Yeah, they both got the beautiful hair going on. <laughs> it's just hard to tell between those guys. When they're on the field together, yeah. it's an issue from the back. Birch. Did. We're up in the press box looking down the field, and you can see it on the replay. Boy, Austin Reed really stepping into these throws, Birch, firing the football. Birch does a great job of securing the catch, and after the catch, he almost picks up a couple yards after. And uh, like you said, Reed does a great job of finding him. Anthony Johnson up to 63 yards rushing. He had a five-yard carry, then a seven-yard carry to pick up a first down. That was 12 on the throw and catch from Reed to Birch. And it looks like a timeout potentially called here. We'll have to see what the call is from the officials. Play clock still had a few seconds left, but maybe it was a little deeper than people thought. Official timeout is called here with 10 minutes, just, just a little more. 10.04 left on the clock, 14 nothing. You're driving the football down the field now with you know authority with the running game mixing in those throws down the field and really this is a this is one of those drives where 
not that the game is in jeopardy at this point at 14 nothing, but you really feel like if you score here, it kind of breaks things open a little bit. 21 nothing with plenty to play in the second quarter. It does, and it kind of and it kind of breaks the spirits of the other team because once you see that 21 on the board to zero, and you know this, you're only in the second quarter. Your spirits kind of just break down, and uh, you have to wonder, you know, when will we see when we start to see other players like J.C. Robles and other kind uh, and other guys who are itching to get in the ball game. We've already seen you know, several running backs mix into the mix, and then we've seen a bunch of different receivers, obviously. I was just going to ask you, if you know, if you're that, that third-team guy or the second-team quarterback, you're starting to think, I'm getting in this one. This is going to happen here. <laughs> Back out on the field after the official timeout. Really, you, you got to be impressed, you know, other than a few mistakes, uh, early interception deep down the field, just taking a shot, and then a couple penalties that have been a little costly. This offense has looked sharp the rest of the way, especially with that running game. Another handoff. This time it's Javon Newton. And again, every play, these offensive linemen are firing off the ball and creating space. And this is good. This is good for the O-line to get that confidence build, especially in run blocking. This time you see big man Joe Wintrick and Ja'Kerry Jackson pulling, um, and that's a lot of weight coming downhill. <laughs> Just probably well over 500 pounds <laughs> coming at you and uh, opens up plenty of space for Javon. Newton. Moving in your direction. Six yards for Newton there. That's going to take the ball to the 20, so right on the cusp, right at the red zone again. And Newton will stay in the game in the backfield off to Reed's left. Tight end in this set, two receivers out to the left. He's looking to throw. Austin Reed, plenty of time. Dances a little, finds his man Rodney Coach. Coach down inside the five. Nice little catch again. Accuracy from Austin Reed. Sensational. Yeah, great job. Another great throw. Austin Reed puts it only in the window where Coates can get it. And uh, the offense goes with 11 personnel this time. Rodney Coates lining up over there and runs an in route. Almost able to stretch out and get the touchdown, but just a little bit short. That'll put the ball down at the two-yard line. So a chance. We've had two rushing touchdowns. It looks like uh, you're in that kind of position where it may be another opportunity for your running game. But instead, we're going to throw the football, toss it up in the corner. Coates just off his fingertips. And that's the Rodney Coates special. I mean, we've seen <laughs> that a thousand times. Rodney with man-on-man -man coverage, and he runs that fade route. I remember when we were in West Georgia for the playoff game, Rodney Coates had the ESPN top 10 play and uh, made a one-handed catch on that same route, uh, just not able to complete that pass that time. Yeah, and last week against Shorter, he had a catch in the end zone over a defender where he kind of did the air walk uh, before getting the feed in. So, yeah, you, these receivers are capable of some sensational plays. That was an 18-yard completion to get it down to the two from Reed to Coates. So here we go, second and goal to go from the two. Two receivers out to the left for Austin Reed. Play action to Newton. Reed's going to keep it. We saw this last week, and then he's just going to shovel pass it to Tate Latio, but it hit the ground. They're going to call it incomplete, and if Reed would have kept that, he would have been in the end zone easy, but unselfishly tried to flip it to Tate. Yeah, and we know Reed can get in the end zone, a big body quarterback. We saw him truck a guy last yeah. week from Shorter. I thought it was about to happen again. And I did. He had numbers on the outside, but uh, at the last second decided to try to flip pass to Taylor Teo just a little bit short. Yeah, it was actually a smart play. He had pulled the defensive back up and it just went right through Tate's hands. Tough to catch the ball sometimes when it's not a spiral and it's kind of been floated. It's almost like a knuckleball in baseball. Here we go, third and goal to go from the two. Snap back. To Reed, Reed, plenty of times got a receiver, easy money to Rodney Coates. Touchdown Argos. They made it look so simple, and just a simple slant route there by Coates, and he's celebrating with his teammates. <laughs> and uh, Coates, sh another sure-handed receiver on the, in this receiving core, and Austin Reed, another accurate ball down there in the red zone, and another touchdown drive for the Argos brings the score to 20 to nothing. Austin Williams on for another PAT in the Bay end of the stadium here. Chance to go up 21 to nothing. Special teams unit on. Dawson Hamlin, the punter, is the holder. We got an offsides, so we'll have to bring that thing back and tee that up again. Oh, that's a football in the water on a penalty. Who's, who's paying for that one? Yeah, that was a, a clear jump by the defensive line trying to get an angle in on that ball. So here's the question. You just de you decline it and kick it again? Yeah, you hope uh, those footballs don't cost as much as the <laughs> NFL. I remember Cam Newton a couple years ago was giving out footballs to the little kids and was paying, I believe, upwards of $1,000 per, per NFL put football. So Those guys make some money. Yeah, We, we don't have that kind of scratch yeah, laying around. No, not like that. Another attempt at it. Williams with the kick up and strong and another football into the water. 
21 nothing is your score now. 8.37 left to play here in the half. You're listening to UWF football on the UWF Sports Network. What does Argo Spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pre-game grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. SummerVista.com. Back with you here by the Bay, balling by the Bay in Pensacola, Florida. Will Kennedy and Jamie Smith with you on the UWF Sports Network, Cox Sports TV, and ESPN Pensacola Radio as well. If you're an Argo fan, you're here for the whiteout for the first home game of the season, you're enjoying this thing. 21 to nothing is the score, 837 left to play in the half. And really, Jamie. The running game offensively has been the story early on, not something, as you were mentioning, that we see all that often from this Argo team. Right, and they haven't had a lot of success through the years with the running game, but tonight doing a great job of pounding the ball on the ground. Colt Norris kicked this thing off. He's got the wind at his back again, going for that left corner of the end zone, and this thing is going to sneak into the end zone. That'll set it up. No, flag down. Didn't quite make it all the way in the corner, so that's going to get some good field position for Virginia Lynchburg out to the 35-yard line. That last drive, 10 plays, 70 yards, 4 minutes and 22 seconds off the clock for the Argos as they take the three-touchdown lead. Super impressed with just you know, the play calling, the consistency, this offensive line, and really this trio of running backs able to get in there and all make something happen. Yeah, and you're seeing the play start to get a little bit cleaner as the game goes along for UWF. Started off a little sloppy and a, and a little slow, but it looks like they've gotten uh, their act together. And uh, this UWF team is playing the, the, the way that we know they're capable of. Another opportunity for the Dragons to try to make something happen as they come back on the field. Two receivers short side of the field. Ball on that right hash mark. It is Richardson. Jeffrey Richardson in at quarterback. Man comes in motion. Richardson goes back to pass. He's got the protection. He's got a man in the middle of the field sitting down in that zone. And finally, the UWF defense gets a hold of him and brings him down. That is Joshua Gray, number four. So nice, nice first play to start this drive. And, you know, keep that clean pocket. Richardson makes something happen. Good throw. Yeah, Richardson puts a nice ball there for his receiver, Gray, who's able to pick up a couple yards after catch before Argo swarm and tackle him there. First down. So the first down on that play, 20 yards on the play. Richardson this time, he's got Dre Duncan right on his heels. He's going to have to dance out and run. He's got a little room to run, but being stretched towards the boundary and finally brought down. Nice job by... Trey Duncan, the linebacker, getting the pressure, but that's what's dangerous about Richardson is if he gets outside of that pocket and the containment, he could make something happen. Richardson just gets it out of the grip of Trey Duncan. Yeah, you know Andre wants that one back, but those quarterbacks like Richard, I mean Richardson, you have to you have to contain them in a way, and sometimes you can't rush to sack the quarterback. You kind of have to rush to contain. 20-yard gain on the pass to pick up a first down. Five yards there on the scramble before finally being brought down. And this time, the inside of that defensive line is making sure there is no room for anything to happen. Gail Laurent in on that play, big number four from his linebacker position. Yeah, big man Laurent able to shed, does a good job of shedding his blocker and bursting into the backfield before Lynchburg even know what hits him. 6'2", 215. Gail looks like, you know, he looks like kind of a wide receiver build with that number four on. 
you kind of be a little, uh, you know, yeah. deceiving because he can come and lay the wood. Yeah, those single digits can get you, especially <laughs> on the defensive side. But uh, Lorenz, a big guy and an athletic guy at that. So here we go. That play brings up a third and seven or third and six. Richardson back to pass, got some time. That ball came out funny. DeMarco Artis had a chance maybe to pick up an interception. That's going to force a fourth down. Hey, Whataburger fans, if you love mushrooms, then you're going to love hearing this. The Mushroom Swiss Burger is now an all-time favorite. Made hot and fresh with two all-beef patties, two slices of Swiss, two layers of premium grilled mushrooms, and a creamy au jus sauce. I don't speak French except on television. Available whenever the craving strikes. Great job by the defense getting off the field. I thought maybe Artis, like you mentioned, may have had a chance at the interception covering that under route, but does enough to get the Lynchburg offense off. Braden Taylor back in there to kick this thing away. End over end bullet. Karan Ashley's going to take it. This is the kind of kick that could lead to a big return. If he can get outside, he does. Everybody holding their hands up. It's not me on the block. Ashley up the sideline. Finally gets licked out of bounds, but what a return. We haven't seen a punt return like that in a while. Reminded you Antoine Griffin a little bit, some of the punt returns he's had, but that's going to take it into UWF territory. Yeah, I mean, we got – and we got Anton Griffin on the sideline yeah. watching the punt return by Ashley. And uh, he's got to be smirking knowing what he did last year with his UWF special teams. But uh, a great job, a great return by Ashley, able to put yeah. the Argo offense in a good position. Into, into the Lynchburg, into the field for Karan Ashley. Great run up the sideline. By the way, the, the punter kicker, Braden Taylor, 6'1", 250 pounds. <laughs> Big fella. Oh. Ashley will take that. On that punt return, he'll feel good about that. Yeah, those feel a little better after you come up with that kind of gain. Reed back in there again. Rolling out. Got a man downfield. Got the completion. Dancing away. It's Coates making some people miss before he is finally dragged down. It looks like we got a flag at the end of that play. Maybe a face mask yeah, as Coates' like helmet came off. As he was dancing away. Yeah, maybe somebody got up high on that tackle. We'll see. They may tack some yards onto the play here. Certainly looks like the indication from the Argo offensive lineman in there. Yeah, Coast does a great job of making a bunch of defenders miss from that Lynchburg defense. Officially, Ashley, 37 yards on that punt return. And that'll be tagged onto the end of that play. Yeah, 15 yards. Ahead yeah, that's a costly penalty. So right back in business again, deep in Lynchburg territory is this UWF offense. Another strong throw from Austin Reed, and then look at the moves. Yeah, uh, Coach Rodney just Coach dancing around. With that dead leg. That's a weird one. It may have come late because I didn't see it on the first initial tackle, but his helmet definitely came. We've seen three or four helmets come flying off already in this game. Clock rolling again, so here we go. That'll put the ball on the 34 of Virginia Lynchburg. Maybe a little deeper than that. The scoreboard may be off by a few yards. Reed, plenty of time, and he's got a man, and it's a touchdown. Evan Mitchell up high for the touchdown Argos. And a great catch by receiver Evan Mitchell. I believe that's his first one on the year. <laughs> Everyone getting in on the action there. Mitchell on the seam, Reed looking downfield and looking towards the end zone. And what a catch by Mitchell going up and getting that ball and snatching it out of the air. In traffic. Did Joe Wintrick just hit the uh, Titanic pose with Evan Mitchell in the end zone there? That's a, that's a different kind of celebration for you. I'm well, sure he's, he's, well, he's strong enough to pick up Mitchell. Joe Winchick, a very big guy. Love to see the teammates get together and celebrate a touchdown, and all these receivers do that. Austin Williams on for the point after. It is up, and it is good. Argos padding on, adding on to that lead as they make it happen again right into the end zone for another touchdown. 28 nothing now, just under six to play here in the second half of this ball game. Love to see this. So another drive after the big punt return gets you into that scoring territory. And then this offense, Jamie, clinically efficient. And they have been. And you've seen it. I mean, they look good on the ground. And they look like a balance. So I think a balance is a better word to describe this offense right now. And once that ground game gets going and uh, once, when the, once that opens up for you, it's just a great job of Austin Reed taking advantage of it. Well, why are we making the cheerleader do the push-ups? you got to have someone to hold the board. Usually, usually it's the ROTC guys doing the push. I, she, you know, she probably said, "I can, I'm gonna pound these out. Let me, let me get these 28 in here real quick." <laughs> Running out of steam at some point. <laughs> Love to see it. The crowd cheering her on. Very nice. You see the white pom poms in the crowd tonight. White out crowd. Bulk of the people in Blue Wahoo Stadium wearing the white T-shirts tonight. And a good crowd for the home crowd. 
first home game of the season. You are listening to UWF football on ESPN Pensacola, 1330 AM, 99.1 FM, WEBY Milton, Pensacola, and watching on Cox Sports TV and your TV on the UWF Sports Network. Set to kick this thing off again, Colton Norris. He's getting some work in here in this first half, kicks it deep down the field. This one is going to hit inbounds, and there's a chance to be returned. It is Rembert, Johnny Rembert again, dancing around before he is finally dragged down from behind. Getting in on that play is Demaria Givens on the special teams coverage. Yeah, Givens, like a missile, just came in and darted at Rembert's ankles are there. Quick takeout, and Lynchburg will start deep in their own territory. So we're waiting to see, you know, eventually, is, is it the next possession that J.C. Robles gets into the game? Do you wait till the second half? I mean, you know, are you planning on it? Maybe even seeing a Sam Vaughn later in this game. These are some things that, uh, you know, will be of interest to, to the fans, the UWF fans especially, but I'm sure to J.C. Robles as well down there on the sidelines. As here we go again. Richardson, this is a back pass. Rembert could throw this thing again, and he does. Chunks it down the field where the only man he has open is an Argo. Picking this thing off with a chance to return all the way to the house. In for the touchdown. You love to see that kind of play happen. That is T.J. Williams on the interception and the touchdown return. A pick six. Come on over and sign that turnover shield, my man. And uh, Williams is going to make the cheerleaders do a couple more push-ups here. But great job just sitting back in coverage, not fooled by the trick play. Williams, pick six. You know, up. Jamie, this is this is, we talked about it in the pregame on the radio that Henry Montgomery, who normally starts back there in that defensive backfield, is out tonight in the, the concussion protocol. So this is a chance for a guy like T.J. Williams to get some time at safety, makes the most of that time at safety. And, boy, look at that wall down the sideline. That, uh, you know, trick plays often can trick the team that are trying to pull them off. They can, and uh, you've, seen the, you've seen evidence of that on that play. Williams in for another point after touchdown. Austin Williams getting a leg workout tonight as well. That one is up, and that one is good. And just like that, 35-0 with just another minute or so off the clock as we're rolling around. Not a bad start to this second quarter as the Argos now have blown this thing wide open at 35 nothing. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, this There's an ROTC the guy RTC jumping in guy, yeah. to, push out, yeah. to push out some push-ups. Those 35 are going to be a little tough to crank out for the cheerleader down there. I'm not sure about the form there. i to get deep into that. Jamie, you're a personal <laughs> trainer, right? Is that, is that good form? <laughs> it, can, it can use some coaching, educational opportunity. So the offense won't even get a chance to get on the field here. Defense will go right back out after the interception, the PAT. I mean, the interception return for a touchdown, the pick six, and then the point after touchdown makes it 35 nothing. 5.39 left to play here in the first half of this one. It's been ugly for Virginia Lynchburg to start this season. Three losses, averaging, giving up 50 points a game. West Florida and the Argos well on that kind of pace tonight at 35 nothing here with Still significant time to play in this first half. Will Kennedy, Jamie Smith with you from Pensacola, Florida here. Looking at another kickoff for Colton Norris. He just was out there. Just was out there booting the ball down the field. Yeah, he's going to have to ice that leg down tonight. He's getting the workout. Him and Austin Williams. Brian Henry with Athletic Communications at the University of West Florida tells me that is the seventh all-time pick six in UWF program history. So seven in just four seasons. Or three and some change. Here we go. Kick return. Wrestled down. Johnny Rembert's finally taken down about the 20-yard line. It's got to be tough, Jamie, for, you know, for Virginia Lynchburg, for some of these guys early in the season, the fourth game of the year, to be on the wrong end of the score this often. And, you know, it's, it's, it's difficult. You know, it's difficult to keep your intensity up and to keep on playing, I'm sure. Yeah, and it's tough to keep your guys motivated like that. But with a startup program like this who just – is in the process of recreating their football program. Um, it's tough, but you have to go through this process, and uh, it, there, there, is, there is light at the, end of the, at the end of the tunnel. So Lynchburg back on offense. Trying to get the taste out of their mouth from that last possession. This one running right in the middle of that big defensive line. You're going to see Gail Laurent and some other big bodies jumping in there. T.J. Kelly in on the tackle as well. 
And those linebackers still continue to be aggressive as TJ Kelly and Laurent, we've called na his name a bunch tonight, uh, continuing to swarm. Looks like Andrew Wilcox, big 96, is in the game as well. So you're going to start seeing some guys come in off the depth chart that aren't on you too deep. Quick catch there, quick catch and throw on second and 11. Is going to move the ball down the field forward a little bit. Yeah, that time brought down by cornerback David Richardson. Uh, Virginia Lynchburg gets a guy working the seam there. Looks like that is going to be number eight for the Lynchburg offense, uh, Daryl Harrison. Virginia Lynchburg right again at the line of scrimmage, third and two. Sidecar back in the backfield. There it is. Nice throw and catch on that play. You, you kind of you see Lynchburg, they've got the potential, Jamie, as Johnny Rimber comes down with that one from Richardson. They've got the potential to make some plays happen. You just have too many misfires in the mix. You try a trick play, you got a snap over the head, it's, you just can't stay consistent. Yeah, they, and Lynchburg has athletes, and uh, but those penalties and the, and, and the mistakes, like you mentioned, will kill you. They pick up the first down on that throw and catch. Complete for nine yards to Sadibi. Come back with a run on first down. They're going to get a couple yards there. You know, this UWF defense is, you know, defenses around the world, <laughs> universally, they want, they want to keep a clean sheet. They want to keep that goose egg up on the scoreboard if you can. So they'll be, they'll be eager no matter who's in the game, this Argo defensive squad, to keep, keep, that, keep that zero up there. Right. As long as you keep the zero, just continue to do your job. I'm sure everyone will be happy. And this time they go with the inside handoff again to the running back, Newman. Just nowhere to go on that play. Maybe a gain of two. That big D line just stuffs those running lanes, and it's just tough for the Newman to get going there. Look at that. I mean, it, you swarm into the football at this point. You know, all the blue jerseys for this Argo defense, and it, it's like, you know, a school of sharks, Jamie, when they're feeding. You know, they, they, they all want to get to that football. Here you go. Third down. Richardson's got a man down the sideline. Good coverage over there. Flying into that play was Marcus Clayton. No flags are down. Rembert was the intended target. That'll bring up another fourth down and force another punt. And if you examine the play, they have Rembert running a go route. And Marcus Clayton is initially beat, but we've seen Marcus Clayton, who does a lot of things in special teams and has speed, is able to make that ground back up and force a tough catch. And Rembert not able to haul it in. So that'll bring out the kick, kicking team again, the punting team, and another chance for a return here. It's Birch and Karan Ashley back for the Argos with, looking at, to return this kick. Good kick. This one's going to bounce deep in. Birch comes up with it, fields it inside the 10, cuts it back across the field. He's going to get it out from inside the 10, out past the 20. Good return and some, some scary moments there for just a second. It is 35 nothing here. You are watching and listening to Argo football here on the UWF Sports Network. What does Argo spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pregame grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. who measure success by the worn tread on their tires, and those who strengthen their body and mind and drift through their weekends over nature's curve. Andrews Institute, for those who move. 
Back here, Blue Wahoo Stadium in Pensacola, Florida. Football by the Bay. Beautiful September night. Will Kennedy and Jamie Smith with you. Argos leading this one 35-0 back on offense against Virginia Lynchburg. Quick throw out from Austin Reed to Tate Latio. Makes the catch, dances a few yards upfield, and it's another first down for UWF. Yeah, and Reed had four receivers out wide that time. Latio runs an out-breaking route in the flat, just able to find him on an easy flat route. And Latio able to make a couple guys miss on that play and picks up another first down for this offense who just continues to move the ball. Confidence is high right now. Austin Reed is back on that field. We were speculating would he be in. He is in for this possession here late in the first half. Anthony Johnson's the running back. Faked the handoff and looked downfield on the play action. This one out of the catch, out of the midst of Chanel, of Kenneth Chanel. Another good ball by, by Reed. Chanel just not able to haul, the, haul it in. That'll bring up a second down and 10 now. We haven't called Chanel's name a lot tonight, but uh, he's been one of the more favorite targets for Reed over the past few games. He really was the guy against Carson Newman. And then last week, you know, you saw the offense start to click. And, and really, you will see this ball spread around to, you know, sometimes as many as eight different receivers. Two out to each side of this formation. Reed steps up in the pocket as a man hits him. Probably affected that throw. He just throws it wide of Chanel in the middle of the field. So now he's looking for Chanel. Kind of got dialed into him a little bit, but that'll bring up a third and ten. Yeah, goes right back to Chanel, looking for him over the middle. Uh, Reed that time does a great job of really stepping up in the pocket, trying to buy time, just hit at the end of that or, or upon releasing the ball. And uh, like you said, well, that probably affected the throw there. That'll bring up a third and ten. So after kind of just clicking right down the field on the last possession, this time a bit of a struggle on the first two plays after the first down to Latio on the next – Series and this one good throw out, quick throw to Coates and Coates gets out of bounds and stopped the clock. So another first down. So hey, you know, two incompletions, third and ten. I got this, no problem. Yeah, two receivers over that time in the boundary and uh, just a tough cover when you're when you're trying to guard guard Rodney Coates and Ken Chanel. It's just tough. And uh, Coates runs a, com a comeback route and Reed able to find him and uh, Coates able to tiptoe for the first down over there. That'll bring up another first down for the Argonauts here as they'd like to put some more points on the board. Lay it on at this point, right? That was for 14 yards on that last completion. This time back to Coates again. Coates, a couple steps in, does a little dance, and he's going to pick up some positive yardage over in front of his own bench. Yeah, quick screen this time to Coates. They have man coverage on the outside, and they try to get Coates to beat his man, but a great job by the defender over there, number 21 for the Lynchburg defense. I believe that's going to be Emmanuel Coulter over there in coverage. Does a great job, only limiting Coates to about four yards on that play. Dimitri Birch into the game with Latio and Karan Ashley out wide to the right. Coates' short side single wide receiver. It's Anthony Johnson, the running back, in with Austin Reed in the backfield. So running game gone now. We're just throwing the football. Reed all day. His offensive line gives him plenty of protection. He finally finds a man in the middle of the field. And that's Johnson, who had slipped out of the backfield. And that, that basically looked like the kind of play we used to run when I was in elementary school, where everybody just ran a bunch of different routes down the field, Jamie, and the quarterback scrambled around until he found somebody. Yeah, I think that play just is, is, is called go. <laughs> Everyone just find a spot, and uh, I'm going to try to find you if you're hoping. This offensive line for the University of West Florida doing a heck of a job here tonight. Here we go. First and ten. There's the handoff up the middle, and there's Johnson again doing his thing, dancing through this Virginia Lynchburg line and picking up some positive yardage. In that time, they get back to what's been nice to them all game, the running game, and Johnson able to find another nice hole in the, on that inside handoff, and they give him eight on that play. You're not going to bring him down cleanly with the first hit. That man just hung on for dear life, but Johnson dragged him for another three or four after the initial contact. We're going to get a timeout for Lynchburg. They had a guy late getting off the field there. they got to be getting tired at this point, and that, that, that really is the thing. You look at the lineups, if you're, you're in the booth and you're looking at the lineup cards of the two teams, UWF is dressing out like 100 players. Lynchburg, maybe not half of that, You know, probably about 50. As you look over their sideline, there's not a lot of depth over there. You're going to get tired quickly, especially when you're playing a team that is rotating in and out so many players on both sides of the football team. Yeah, and you probably have a couple guys who are playing a lot of things, special teams, defense, maybe both ways. So for Lynchburg, you'll have those guys that get gassed, and I know that I'm, I'm sure they're thankful for 
uh, these 59 seconds in this quarter to run off the clock so they can go in the locker room and get a breather here. What do you, what do you say if you're the Lynchburg coaching staff? I mean, it's a tough one, you know. I, I mean, you just have to tell those guys to hang in there. I mean, you know why you're here, and you know you know what your, what your season is made for uh, this year at least. Uh, so you just have to tell those guys to continue to execute on the small things and continue to stay focused. Let's string together a couple plays. Let's pick up a couple first downs. Let's exactly. see what happens, right? I mean, as a coach, you would, you know, personally, I would say we go in the locker room and say, okay, throw that one out. We're starting the second half 0-0. Zero, zero. Exactly. You know, let's come back out there. For, don't look at the scoreboard. Let's and just you play, have to. play and football. You and you have to. UWF really, I mean, I, the numbers are going to be impressive tonight when all is said and done. And we start adding these things up, and we'll, we'll kind of look at them at halftime for you. But Austin Reed back in there again as we pick play back up. That ball, he threw that down into the dirt. If not, that might have been a pick six going the other way. Good job jumping that route from the Lynchburg secondary. Yeah, they do a great job of really sniffing out that screen that we were trying to get set up on the outside. It looks like the intended target was Chanel on the outside, but, but it looks like that is going to be Daquan Errington that came up in the secondary and broke that up. I thought maybe that was going to be a pick six. Jumped right into that play, yeah. Just kind of kind of flew in and had, had an angle on the ball. You've had six different receivers catch balls for Austin Reed tonight. Anthony Johnson's up uh, over 70 yards on nine carries at this point in the game, so everything is working right now. Reed back to pass again. This time he's got a man running to the corner down the field. In for, did he get in? Yeah, Kevin Grant with the catch and... The Argo touchdown. And How about that? Yeah, big man Kevin Grant. We haven't called his name tonight, but Kevin Grant runs a corner route and, and man coverage. That's just a tough cover. And uh, Kevin Grant able to lose his guy, has two or three steps on him, and read again another beautiful ball. And uh, Kevin Grant able to do the rest, another touchdown for the Argos. What's impressive there is I think Reed saw him early and realized he was about to get separation, didn't throw it too soon. Held on to it, made sure that the throw was right where it needed to be. Nice job by Kev to get that ball around the pylon and get it into the end zone. Here's the – once again on the PAT. This time we don't kick the ball into the bay, but we got a man jumping off the side trying to take that snap right out of the holder's hands. Yeah, that's going to be the second time for him tonight that he's jumped off sides for a VUL. He's trying to get a st – Yeah, he's like, give, hey, if nothing else, I'm getting a block kick tonight. Yeah, trying to give this, this team something to cheer about. We are down to 44 seconds left in the half. Another touchdown awaiting the point after. 41 nothing right now as Austin Williams awaits the snap here. Dawson Hamlin snaps good, holds good, kick is up, and it is strong and good. 42 to nothing. A blowout underway here at Blue Wahoo Stadium by the Bay. Let's take another look at this. You mentioned it, Jamie. Look at that throw. Right on the outside shoulder and then diving and just wrapping that ball around the the pylon. Yeah, another great catch by Kevin Grant. And we were talking about it before the game. Kevin Grant has all the talent in the world. And when he decides to turn it on, I believe he's one of the probably one of the best uh, receivers in the country. This receiving core, I mean, we see a lot of talented, athletic receivers and offensive players in the Gulf South Conference. There's probably not a better conference Division two wise in the country, top to bottom, and a and, and number of athletes. And you think of there's guys playing in the NFL, Tyreek Hills and other guys that come out of this conference. That this group of receivers, you got six, seven, up to eight guys that can all make that play. Yeah, and I mean that's just I mean credit it to the kind of athletes that you recruit at UWF. I mean you have you're going up against the Malcolm Butlers of the world who came from West mm -hmm. Alabama, and you can go you can go on and on. Uh, more about the recent guys that are, have been in the league for the GSE, but it's just a tough con conference to play in. Colt Norris booting this thing into the end zone. Did he catch it outside the end zone? Apparently so, because he's going to run this thing out. No, oh, look at that flying down. DeMarco Artis, the linebacker on special teams, coming in hot, as they say. And he was a heat-seeking missile on that time, on that, on that run back for VUL. Really, really laid a lick, and I'm sure he's was thinking another, <laughs> thinking about it again, <laughs> about returning that ball. I'm sure he will think second, uh, have a second thoughts about returning that ball next time. That is, uh, yeah, you might just want to take a knee in the end zone. Although, if you, I guess, if they said he caught it outside the end zone, you got to bring it out. That's that's a weird one. Usually, the the official back there will give you the, the kneel down. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> That's a big fella coming at you right there. Yeah, that's a lot of weight coming at you. I'm sure he's going to feel that one in the morning. I would 
go out and beat the pain. <laughs> Maybe put an ice pack on that early. Is there? Any, yeah. Is there anything happening here? Let's see what the call is going to be from the officials here. I, when they're when they're writing down notes, I'm always interested in what those notes say. Yeah, I didn't see a flag on the previous play, so I'm kind of sh interested into what they could be talking about here. Maybe a spot, or did they did they miss it? Maybe they should have downed at the end zone. I don't know. If, if not, that's a shame that that man had to get hit like that <laughs> for whatever the call is. Argo's defense on the field, wait, you know, waiting to come out and do this. This this is a. Uh, We're trying to get so two fouls on each side, offsetting fouls. Sorry if you couldn't hear the official there, but it, it sounded like but you know end of the play after the play on both sides. So that'll just mean we'll, we'll we'll go from where the play ended and pick it up again. Do you try something here if you're Lynchburg, or do you just basically say let's get out of here? Let's, yeah, let's, I run, just, let's run the ball in the middle of this line, I, let the clock roll, and yeah, I just cut my losses and did, and and, and, co and go into the locker room and. Um, and, and talk to my guys here. Oh, this defense is really flowing to the football there. Newman, no chance as he's dragged down quickly on that play. And Artis again, another big hit that time on Newman. Clock continues to run here. They'll let it. They'll let it drift down towards the half. And like you were saying, Jamie, try to get to the locker room and lick the wounds a little bit and figure out. And if you're, you know, if you're UWF, you're going to go in and. As coaches do, even when it's 42 to nothing, there'll be all the things that went wrong they'll be calling out. Right, and you just have to go and talk to your guys. You'll probably have a couple encouraging of, of encouraging words for VUL, but uh, you just have to go explain that uh, basically this is a 0-0 ball game come second half, and we're going to try and do our best to that, build. That brings us to the half, and we're, we're efforting getting Coach Shinnick as he's coming off here. We're trying to catch him for a quick interview before they get to the locker room. But, Jamie, really, I mean, you know, you look at this, and what do you, what do you have to kind of pick on? 18 first downs for the Argos. They've run the ball 16 times for 100 yards plus in the first half. I mean, truly an impressive performance uh, from just about everybody offensively, and the defense has been solid and flowing to the football. Yeah, both sides, special teams, defense, and offense as, as well. And uh, I think you have a couple things. You have a couple things that you can improve on. It looks like we have Brian Henry on the sideline here with Coach Chinnick. We apologize. We're trying to see if we can get his microphone up, but I think we, yeah, I think we lost. We lost him there. We apologize for that. We're trying to catch Coach Shinnick before going to the locker room. There, we will take a break here and then bring you back in here shortly for halftime. The Argos lead this thing forty-two to nothing here on the UWF Sports Network. What does Argo spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pre-game grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. Back with you here at Blue Wahoo Stadium. There you see the Argo Athletic Band 
playing here at halftime. Lots to be happy about if you're a University of West Florida Argonaut fan. 42 points in the first half are a school record. The old mark was 37 against Shorter last year. That game right here in Blue Wahoo Stadium. Jamie Smith and Will Kennedy here with you. This is this is you know, one of those performances that you're not quite sure what you're going to get when you have a team like Virginia Lynchburg that comes in. You think it could be something like this. It has turned out to play out that way. And that's 42 points on the board, Jamie, despite an interception early on, first possession, first offensive play of the game. A missed 57-yard field goal that was returned for a long touchdown. There are some, some highlights to look at from this first half of football. There is no doubt about that. This is the first score, and this has really been the story of the first half, Jamie, that short touchdown run to get the scoring underway for Anthony Johnson. He's been a beast. Yeah, they've been leaning on Johnson all game, and I'm sure they'll lean on him and a couple uh, more running backs in that stable of running backs as well. Here you go again. The next time down, we flip over to the second. It was 7-0 after the first quarter, and then you've got Gardner taking it in for a touchdown. So both of your running backs getting untracked early in this one. Yep, and another one of those running backs we just talked about, Jaden Gardner beats the defense to the outside, using that speed there for another touchdown. Austin Reed wants in on the act. Rodney Coates, he finds him to make it 21-0 at that point. 8.37 left in the quarter, and still you're thinking, yeah, you know, it's, it's starting to shape up, but then the explosion takes place. Just a few minutes later, Reed, plenty of time all day in the pocket. He looks downfield, heck of a catch in traffic by Evan Mitchell. And what a catch by Evan Mitchell going up with two hands, full extension, able to come down with that ball. Great catch by Mitchell there. The defense, you know, so we, we got to get on this act a little bit. This was probably a, a, a mistake, a, not, not the trick play that we really wanted to run. And you said, I mean, you can expect these type of things when you have a desperate team like VUL. They tried a trick play but didn't work in their favor. And then you just see 14. TJ Williams. With his, with, his, yeah. with his defense. Williams come down with the ball and take it to the house, pick six. Did defenders like the block after? It's it's exciting. After you want to like see this, your yeah. you want to see your guy get it to the get it to the, the promised land. It's exciting to have that blue wall come in. And you know you got that protection. That in front brought of it you. to 35 to nothing. And you see everybody, you know, the defense is going to celebrate after something like that. I uh, love the turnovers. This is a defense that has been looking to force these kind of turnovers and create these big plays. That would make it 35 to nothing. And it wasn't even done. I mean, you, you, had, you still had five and a half minutes left. And then this drive gets going down the field. Heck of a throw, heck of a catch, and really love the effort from Kevin Grant at the end of this play to get it around the pylon. Yeah, what a catch by Kevin Grant. This is all hands on this play. No chest like you see a bunch of receivers do these days. All hands. Kevin Grant, two hands secure the catch and does a great job of contorting his body to get that ball just inside the pylon for the score. How about Austin Reed in the first half? 17 completions, 25 attempts. He threw an interception on the first play of the game into the wind, trying to get the ball deep downfield. He has completed, though, 68% of his passes. We saw that last week against Shorter, too. 228 yards and three touchdowns for Reed in this ball game. You like to see the consistency, but at the same time, you take into affect the level of competition. you got to take that into account a little bit. Shorter last week, now up to 43 games in a losing streak. Virginia Lynchburg, a team that has really struggled. Not to take anything away from what this Argo offense is doing, but you know you're going to see much tougher competition in the Gulf South Conference coming up starting next week with Mississippi College. Do you like what you're seeing from this group? What do you see maybe that needs to be cleaned up a little? Well, oh, it's, a little it's a slow start. It was a slow start to start the game off. You mean, of course, you had the Austin Reed pick. And you don't want to see your offense come and start like that. So I'm sure you could, I'm sure you could come out, and, and, and that's something to improve going forward is also. The running game, we've been super impressed with that. Here's some halftime stats. You've thrown for 162 yards in this game. I think that rushing needs to be updated a little bit. They're, they're over 100 yards, I think, total as a team. That's 71 alone for Anthony Johnson. Uh, Javon Newton has 19 yards. Gardner has 18 yards. So 100 plus, I think 108 yards total rushing. So you like that balance. Um, 220, I think, 228 yards for Austin Reed, 108 yards rushing. That's tremendous offensive output against air. <laughs> You'll take it against anybody. Yeah. And then to have some of the big plays. We've, we, you know, we saw the interception return. We also saw a big punt return. We're starting to see some of those plays come from other areas as well. And you're starting to see the the just the wide away array of playmakers that UWF does have, and we'll see that. We were going to take a break right here. We come back. We'll talk more about this football game and give you a little bit more on the University of West Florida. You're watching the UWF 
Sports Network. In an emergency, especially a life-threatening emergency such as a stroke or heart condition, every second matters. As the region's only comprehensive stroke center, you can trust Ascension Sacred Heart Emergency Care teams to work quickly to identify, understand, and treat your condition. And we connect you to the follow-up care that's right for you. Find 24-7 ER care near you at GetSacredHeartCare.com. This is not a restaurant. This is slow smoking that stirs your soul. The stuff that makes going out feel like coming home. This is not a restaurant. It's a barbecue, 50 years in the making. Come fill up on all your favorites. Sonny's Barbecue. Come taste tradition. Here at CPC, you're not just a customer, you're part of the family. We operate seven offices throughout the Florida Gulf Coast and Alabama regions with nearly 100 employees to best serve you, the customer. So thank you to all of the thousands of businesses who have helped to make us a leader in the office technology industry for more than 45 years. We will continue to provide a level of service that can't be copied and look forward to the bright future that lies ahead for our communities, cities, and country. That's Sky's Pizza on Davis Highway. You're listening to UWF Football on e We're back with you here at Blue Wahoo Stadium in beautiful Pensacola, Florida. Will Kennedy with you. And halftime, 42-0 is the score. The Argos lead over Virginia Lynchburg. Joining us now is the president of the University of West Florida, Dr. Martha Saunders. Enjoy the first half? Very much. Very much. It's a wonderful evening. I love the score. Everybody's having fun. Did you, do, did you dial up this weather for us? Yes, I did. I've been monitoring it carefully for the last couple of weeks. We, no, we do not have a weather machine at the University of West yeah. Florida yet. We're working on it, though, yes, right? Yes, that's right. That's Look, right. So exciting to have football back here in Blue Wahoo Stadium and, and the crowd tonight and you know, leading the Gulf South Conference in home attendance at nearly 6,000 fans a game in the top 15 in the country in Division Two. This is a unique place to play football. And recently a study has found it's, it's helping pump money into this local economy. It, it is. And, you know, we, we knew people would be excited about football here, and there's certainly been a lot of enthusiasm, but it's making an economic contribution. We did uh, an economic impact study. It's more than $9 million coming into to, uh, Escambia County because of UWF football. This football program, I think we sometimes forget, the fans do, with the success that has happened early. This is just season number four. And I know we have to temper our expectations sometimes. You know, you make a run to the national championship game in just the second season in 2017. I think a lot of people don't realize how unique and how rare it is to be at this level where the, the bar is set very high by Coach, Coach Pete Shinnick. Sure. And, you know, this it doesn't happen everywhere. No, no, it doesn't <laughs> happen everywhere. But, but you know, about out of three seasons, we've had two winning seasons. You know, we understand you build a strong program. It's going to stay strong. You may not go to the national championship every year, but every other year would be good. Well, we could live with that. We could do that. As an athletic program in general, athletic director Dave Scott, fantastic job. And building champions for life is the theme for this program. 101 now conference titles. Uh, so, some benchmarks and goals and things that have been set and broken. But really, the student athletes, I think a cumulative 3.0 and above GPA for the entire athletic program. Our athletes get a good education first. They perform well on the field, and then they go on to contribute to their communities as well-educated uh, who, uh, athletes who stay athletes for life. They're champions for life. They the, really the are. The student comes first, right? Student, the student always. In, in that they term. are the student athletes. Let's talk about some of the other great things that are going on with the university, uh, the state metrics. Um, I yeah. know you're proud of that. Yes, we are. <laughs> Performance-based funding. We, may, we scored 94 out of 100 points. That was an all-time high for the university. Uh, and only by one measly point, uh, second highest in the state. And we're up against some big hitters. And you got to open a, a new building officially just the other day. Opened the lab annex. So now we have a facility that matches the caliber of our students and our faculty. And we are very proud of that and got a little room to grow. What's next? <gasps> oh, my goodness. Don't even ask. More, <laughs> more of the same, I hope. You got the grandkids with you tonight. I know uh, you, you, they're enjoying this thing, and so we're. They are having a ball, and they've learned the fight song. Tired yet? Knackered out? Ready to go to bed? No, they're not. <laughs> I, I am. 
<laughs> That's the way it works, right? <laughs> yeah, the, it the, is. The joys of youth. Thank you for coming in and spending Thank a few you. minutes it's with my us. my pleasure. Get a few more points for you here All right. on the board in the second half. We'll take a break here. We'll be back with you to break down and take a look towards the second half. You're watching UWF football Six, here on the five, UWF Sports four, Network. Three, Success isn't measured by fame or fortune. It's measured by time and the amount of times you influence others to be better, to transform something small into something spectacular. Success is measured by the impact you make. What impact will you make? The University of West Florida. No limits. What does Argo Spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pre-game grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. Welcome back in here into the booth. Will Kennedy and Jamie Smith with you here from Blue Wahoo Stadium. University of West Florida all over Virginia Lynchburg, 42 to nothing. I keep having to look at the scoreboard just to make sure that it's right. We saw 42 points scored in the entire game last week right. when we were on the road up and shorter. This has been an offensive explosion in the first half. Don't want to leave the defense out ever as well. They've been good. Here's, here are the updated stats, and you see 228 228 passing for UWF, 108 rushing, total of 336. That's a whole game, a lot of weeks. Right, and I mean, still another half of football to be played, and UWF usually averages around, or looks to average around 400 to 500 yards per game, and uh, they have the ability, especially at this point in the ball game, to eclipse that. So I'm Coach Chinnick, I'm sure Coach Chinnick could, would be happy uh, with that kind of output today. Those 42 points, considering that there's the turnover on the bottom and the UWF call the first play of the game offensively, deep throw down the field for Austin Reed was picked off. So that didn't hurt anybody. You forced two turnovers on the other side. And really, Virginia Lynchburg, 81 yards passing. They've had a play or two. Uh, only able to run the ball for 11 yards. So you, you're really looking at a situation where this defense is, is swarming. It is coming up and making the big plays and starting to come into their own, as we touched on a little early in the broadcast. Right. And, I mean, like we mentioned, they started slow, and now they're coming into their own. And this team is starting to play freely, and you can kind of see kind of that controlled chaos. And with Coach Doolin, we talked a little bit to him uh, with last year and the year when he first got here and now. And Coach Doolin likes to create that kind of controlled chaos where it's controlled, but he likes his players to play freely in a sense. Have you ever seen, and you've been, you've been watching this team since, since the beginning, have you ever seen more athleticism, especially on the defensive side of the ball, really on both sides of the ball, but defensively it just seems to me with the numbers of guys that they're able to rotate in and out up front and all the way through in the defensive backfield, the depth is, is pretty incredible. It's crazy, yeah. And, I mean, we've had athletes in the past, but I don't think anything like this year. And with the grad guys that's, that has came in and the transfers, I don't think we've, we've even seen the, the kind of depth that we've had uh, this year in the past years of this program. For the casual fan, you may not know, I mean, it really has changed the landscape of college football, the transfer portal, guys that are able to, once you've played your, your eligibility, your, you graduated, excuse me, once you've graduated from a Division I, you can transfer out and play wherever. We've seen that at the Division I yep. level where yep. quarterbacks especially have gone and played somewhere else. But we're getting guys coming down to the D2 level for a better opportunity or just something a little different. They want to go to grad school, and they are bringing a, a set of skills and physicality. And then also uh, this coaching staff did a fantastic job of finding guys, bringing in guys from the junior college level to come in as well. And good guys too. And um, they're not just going to bring in any, you know, Joe Schmo off the streets. You have to meet the standards of what Coach Chinnick has put in place, the RTA standards. And uh, they're bringing in good guys and, and at good athletes as well. And, I mean, you just go up and down the charts and you see talent everywhere. 
Yeah, we heard Dr. Saunders in the last segment say, you know, we, we talked about the, the GPA for overall athletics. It's no joke to get into the University of West Florida as a student athlete. I mean, to, to, to be accepted to the school, to get in, you know, I'm not, we're not going to call it any other names, but it, it, there's a different playing field sometimes between the others. All right, we're going to take another break. When we come back, we will get into the second half again. 42 to nothing, your Argos up big in this one. We'll be right back with you here on the UWF Sports Network. What does Argo Spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pre-game grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. Create a bright future. Discover. Bringing you back in here for some second half action from Blue Wahoo Stadium, Pensacola, Florida. Will Kennedy and Jamie Smith with you on Cox Sports TV on the UWF Sports Network. We're also simulcasting tonight on ESPN Pensacola, 1330 AM, 991 FM, WEBY, Pensacola, Milton. 42 to nothing. Still a lot of football left to be played. That could be a final score. And you'd be happy with it in many cases, Jamie. Instead, we still got a whole half of football left. And really, a lot of storylines that are left to play out because we'll see, does Coach Shinnick, Coach Pete Shinnick of the University of West Florida go to that bench right away? Do we see the second unit, if you will, offense? J.C. Robles getting in at quarterback. Will you see Sam Vaughn, the guy who started six games for this program, won five of them before he got hurt last year. We, we see him in tonight. This is a kid coming off Tommy John surgery. I call him a kid because I'm a lot older than him. But he's a guy that was at the University of Georgia, transferred. He's, a, he's in the grad studies now, and he's, he's itching to come back. They thought it might, he might not be able to come back this season. Worked extra hard after his Tommy John surgery. So Sam, number three, has a chance to get back in and, and maybe play tonight, which would be a great story in and of itself. Yeah, and you may see Sam Vaughn, but I'm, I'm, more, I'm, I'm very excited to, see, to get the opportunity to see J.C. Robles. And when we go back to the Carson Newman game, he didn't have – a chance to even get his feet set in that offense, if you will. And uh, I'm excited to see what, what he comes out and is able to accomplish today. And for fans, it, in that game, yeah, he, the protection wasn't there early on. He did, the offense wasn't clicking. And it wasn't a case where Coach Shinnick pulled J.C. It was planned to have Sam, I mean, to have Austin Reed come in and play in the third series, I right. think it was. Right. And then he just happened to move the offense, and you, you go with the hot hand. And since then, Austin Reed has been pretty sensational. Yep. Robles got in, J.C. did at the end of last week, and really looked good as well. So we'll see if that shakes out because UWF will get the ball here. They defer to the second half, kick the ball off in the first half, so they got a chance here to get this football and see what happens on offense. This kick is a little short, <laughs> and his knee was down, so that'll be no, no return there. I think that was uh, Javon Newton catching that ball number four over there on the side. So if he doesn't go all the way down to his knee, he might have a big return, but instead that knee was down college football. That's where the ball stays. Yeah, and it looks like we'll get Reed for at least one more drive as he comes out onto the field. So I wonder from a coaching staff standpoint, or maybe you went in there and there were a couple things you talked about at halftime that we want to see cleaned up a little bit. Yep. So maybe you get Austin back out there for another possession or two just to see if we can work on those things. There's Coach Pete Shinnick, Coach Steve Sonne, the offensive line coach right there to his left. He'll have lots of uh, kudos to hand out to his group when they break this down as a team, that offensive line has been very, very good tonight. Starters 
the same on the offensive line and really the stay, same starting offense to start this second half. Anthony Johnson in it running back. Johnson will take it just the same way they started early in the game, and Johnson dances through, puts that head down, and picks up a couple tough yards. And he, that misdirection play, uh, and they get the offense, or I'm sorry, they get the defense flowing one way, and then Johnson puts that right foot in the ground, and he's headed off to the races. Able to pick up about seven on that. Maybe they'll give him six. Anthony Johnson's performance tonight really bodes well for this offense because getting that running game untracked, having the guy that you can count on for the tough yards, the hard yards, has been something this offense has been wanting to do. They found that tonight for sure, and the confidence will be high heading into the future weeks as they hand to Johnson again, puts the head down, moves a couple defenders, second and third efforts there, enough to pick up a, another Argo first down. And that's a great job by the freshman over there. Jacob Bruce put a pancake on this guy. Jacob Bruce over there right at right tackle. Puts this guy on the ground and opened up, opens up a great running lane for, for Johnson. Jacob Bruce originally was the second team guy over at right tackle, but Ethan Cruz got hurt right before the first game. And, you know, you take advantage of your opportunities. Bruce has done a nice job and has looked very solid tonight. Johnson, eight yards on that one for a first down. Johnson will take another carry, trying to look to get to the outside. The pursuit gets in there right in front of his own bench before eventually taking him out of bounds. And Johnson, the workhorse tonight, get that man something, some water. He deserves <laughs> it. I mean, he's been running great, and he's, he's put this offense uh, on his back. Flag down on the field. We'll see what this call is. A lot of times on those stretch plays to the sidelines, somebody gets called for holding, and that is the case here. 74. They got Mike Della on that one. You know what's interesting is, is, is a running back ever said I'm tired? No, very I, rarely, they're right? Not going to, and you know, you don't ever <laughs> want to come out the game, even if you, you know, you're gasping for air. You don't want to come out the game as a running back. You want to continue to shoulder that load. They're yelling at you from the bench. You okay? And you don't even look. You don't. Even, there's no eye contact. Yeah, that's with the bench. Here. I just, I'm, I'm ignoring you. That's going to back it up a little bit. Sets up a first and twenty. So, the positive work now in the hole a little bit. Fake pitch. Reed with all day to throw. He's got a man down the field. If this ball's on the money, it's trouble. It is. Quentin Randolph had to go to the ground. To That's a tough one if Q keeps. I think he had to come back on it a little bit. I think the ball was a touch behind him. But how about Q, our guy with another big catch? Yeah, and that's another great ball by, by Austin Reed. And <laughs> an even better catch by Quentin Randolph. Does a great job. And uh, O-line holding up just in time for Reed to let go of that ball. And Randolph oh. securing the catch with two. Basket style. I, I I wonder, yeah, there, I think Q's mad at himself because he felt like he didn't need to go to the ground. He could have just reached back and grabbed that ball and kept running. He wants to score every play, as all these guys do. <laughs> yeah, you know Q's one of the more exciting guys on the team. And uh, I'm sure he'll be he'll be mad at himself, like you mentioned, that he wasn't able to take that into the, to the house. 46 yards on the throw and catch. Ball at the 22 of the Dragons now as UWF threatens here this first possession of the second half. Dancing through, making something happen. That's Javon Newton in it running back now behind this dominant UWF offensive line here. There's Devin Gibson, number 65, in the middle there with the, the fairly fresh blue cleats he's got on. Sporting some new ones. He's showing, showing uh, <laughs> our kicker there. You know, you're not the only one with the highlighter colored cleats. With the style, with, with, with style points. And he's a, he's a local guy out of West Florida Tech where you played as well. And, uh, you know, nice to see this mix of guys. You know, Joe Wintrick at left guards from the Tampa area. You got guys kind of from, from different parts, some local, some around the state, and a few mixed in from other parts of the country. But Coach Shenick building a really solid program here at UWF. Here we go. Second down. Throw to the end zone. Karan Ashley he turns back in. He maybe makes that catch. Goes up in the air instead of kind of letting it float over his shoulder. But another nice throw from Austin Reed. Yeah, just led him a little bit too out far in front that time. Ashley did a great job of, or showed a great effort there trying to make the one-handed grab. Reed just led him a little bit too far out in front. That's a tough one. You're kind of throwing to that back shoulder. And with those big receivers, I think you're kind of thinking like Rodney Coates did last week. He's just going to go up over the top and grab it rather than let it ride as far as it did. That will bring up third. And four, ball at the 17 in the red zone now. See if UWF can get another touchdown drive here. Reed, this one off the hands of the receiver out there, just threw it behind him as he was curling in. Is that Tate? Yeah, Tate Latio. Kind of a tough off and on night for Tate. That one not his fault. It was just kind of thrown out of his catch zone. Yeah, either Tate Latio or Kevin Green. I'm not sure which, which receiver that was over there in the boundary. Uh, just a little bit behind him 
on that play, not able to corral it. We haven't seen a lot of throws like that from Austin Reed. No, tonight. he's been super accurate, even on the ones like the previous play to Quran where it wasn't a catch, but it was th thrown in the right spot. Austin Williams on for a field goal attempt. This one will be a little shorter than the 57-yarder he tried earlier. This one is up, and this one is no good. Another miss is pulled wide to the left. We're in a tough spot to see. Another missed field goal, another struggles on special teams continue. 42 nothing though. You're watching UWF football on the UWF Sports Network. What does Argo Spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pregame grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. For those who sweat in determined pursuit, and those who meet the morning with a firm handshake and a smile and breathe between stages of unwavering effort. Andrews Institute, for those who move. What's even better than going to a UWF football game? Going with all your friends. Decks are available for groups between 25 and 200 people, all group decks come with a UWF football game ticket, food, and soft drinks. It's great for company outings, group functions, birthday parties, and youth groups. Prices start as low as $25 per person. Call 850-474-2746 for more information or to book your deck today. Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis, Missouri. Back with you here, Will Kennedy, Jamie Smith, Blue Wahoo Stadium. White out tonight. You see the fans with the white pom-poms. Those guys look excited. 42 to nothing. There's lots to be excited about. Virginia Lynchburg back on offense. The one area that we're going to keep talking about, I think, Jamie, in the weeks to come is, is special teams and specifically the field goal attempts and units. Austin Williams is really struggling, but here's the Dragons back on offense. The defense not struggling. Those big bodies up front jumping in there. Matthew Gotell, Daryl Wilson. That's a lot of funk. Yeah. A lot of beef. Yeah, big man Ian Bush that time yeah. getting in on the on the fun, able to meet the back. Mr. Mr. Thomas Newman in the backfield that time for a, a loss of about three. That's in the neighborhood of about 900 pounds of dude coming at you. So if you're T. Newman, sometimes discretion's the better part of valor. Go to the ground. <laughs> Don't take that hit. That'll set up a second and about 14 or 15. Another mishandled snap. Richardson's in trouble, and they're going to get to him. There's that defensive line. Gotell's in there. And there's Wilson again. We haven't called Chandler Ferguson's name. Saw him walking out of there much tonight. It's been the defensive line that's really been in on a lot of these plays. Yeah, again, I mean, you see Ian Bush. And, uh, I mean, just getting, shedding his block and does a great job. And big man Daryl Wilson getting in on the front as well. They both get to quarterback. I think that's actually, is that Gotell? That yeah, that's Gotell getting in there, number 90. Sorry. You got 92, 98, 99, <laughs> a bunch of the 90s in there. That's going to set up third and a country mile, probably about 23 or 4, from where the ball is spotted. Let's see what the call is. Delay a game? Do they, the, they get the timeout before the play clock roll? Yep. So you're you going to take a third and... 20 plus and make it third and 20 plus or third and a mile yeah and it's going to be tough this offense hasn't hasn't had an explosive play like this tonight so you have to wonder what they go with here maybe something like a, a short screen or something to just bring life into this vul offense or in this vul team at yeah that. it's it's you can see it you can kind of see it on their sideline and i mean they were outgunned coming in and there's that quick out Almost like a screen, and it's Johnny Rembert again. He's going to get up to about the 10 yard line. Basically, buy yourself a little room to punt the football. So it'll go right back to UWF on offense. 10 minutes left here in this third quarter. 
that's the kind of play you think this offense maybe would run a little bit more, just trying to get a guy in space. Well, especially with one of their more play their their playmakers like Rembrandt on the outside. Uh, but we haven't seen any a lot of plays like that. Uh, it's, it's been more of you know a quarterback Richardson just dropping back and trying to make plays, whether he's scrambling and buying time for his receivers. Taylor shanks this thing. That may go about 20 yards. We'll see what, by the time it bounces where they clocked it out of bounds. Ball was at about the 10. We'll see where this spot ends up. Hey, when it starts going wrong, Jamie, everything starts going wrong. In, in many ways, and that was not the punt that you wanted there. Yeah, the domino effect starts happening there. That, that drive for Lynchburg, three plays, negative yards. Negative 10 to 15, uh, what the final damage was. But it, it not not a solid start to the second half for this Lynchburg offense. Yeah, this uh, a shutout tonight would be, I think, an add to only three in program history. And you know that's what the defense is shooting for here. And we get J.C. Robles' first look tonight. Yeah, there's Robles in the game as this drive starts deep at the 35 into Dragon territory. Robles with the handoff and a nice little quick gain. For Jaden Gardner. Yeah, the last shutout we had was uh, that playoff appearance over in Wingate. And um, as Coach Shinnick would, would pronounce it, and I still pronounce the uh, the Wingate wrong every time I say it. But um, It's yeah, not Wingate. It's Wingate. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> right outside of Charlotte, yeah, North Carolina. Yeah, last playoff appearance that we had up there um, on, that, on that run to the national championship that yeah. year. In Monroe, I was up in Charlotte at the time, and I couldn't couldn't get to the game that weekend. I was up at uh, Wake Forest instead. But quick out, there's Robles with that strong arm, accurate arm as well. Coach Jennick will tell you, I've got two really good quarterbacks. Make that three with Sam Vaughn, and that's another solid first down throw. Kenneth Chanel with the catch. Robles comes in, picks right up where Reed left off. And we saw him last week have a couple good throws and another, just a dart in there by Robles that time, able to find Chanel on a comeback route. And Chanel breaks off a couple tackles and puts the Argos in the red zone. Yeah, in the red zone again, ball at the 11. I think they could pick up a first down or maybe it's maybe more back to 12 or 13. Robles is in trouble. He fakes the handoff and there's a defender in there. Really the first time we've seen anything like that happen and another helmet comes off. May need to check some chin straps for this defense on the other side. That's Callaway Lee, number eight, getting in there. Yeah, it wasn't fooled by the RPO that time. And um, when Robles pulled the ball, he was all over Robles that time for a loss of about five. That's going to push it back a little bit. J.C. Robles, 6'5", about 220. Graduate transfer from Colorado State. It's a guy that played a handful of games, started a handful of games for Colorado State. A lot of times, again, he was recruited by one guy. Coaching staff changes. You know, the, the philosophy changes on offense a little bit. Robles looking to throw that ball. Gets it out there to Chanel a little bit low, but Chanel's going to pick up the yards they lost on the previous play. But, yeah, this is a kid out of California, and Robles who's got all the physical tools. I mean, he's got the stuff. He's got this, the typical size of uh, even, like, the pro quarterbacks, the co pro quarterbacks look for. And, you know, California is a quarterback hotbed. And uh, J.C., um, just a, he, he exuberates all of those qualities you want in a quarterback. So they lost five on the sack, picked up about five on the pass to Chanel. Yeah, and Robles is really, the receivers have told me, he spins the ball. You know, Reed's got a strong arm. They both have strong arms, but there's something different about the way Robles throws a little bit, and he's going to throw it here on third down and ten. He's actually going to roll out. There you see the athletic ability. Gets away from a couple guys and ends up making a throw to the end zone. I don't think he got his foot in, but what a play by Robles just extending that play. Shades of Johnny Menzel on that play. Two spin moves. <laughs> Tapped the circle twice, Robles. And he, no made the, he made those guys miss. But, I mean, a big guy able to move that quickly and, and, and that swiftly is, is really remarkable. And just not able to seal it off. Oh. Chanel not able to get that foot. I, yeah, was he throwing it to Mitchell or Chanel? It's kind of hard to tell. But we're going to try another field goal. Yeah, by the way, yeah, you have to put the laundry into the dryer after the spin cycle, There you right? go. There it is. So Austin Williams back out. We're going to see if he can. He's 0 for 2 tonight on field goal attempts. It's an opportunity to see if we can uh, get his head right as the play clock goes down. And that's going to back it up a little bit. Do you really want to back up your field goal kicker after he's missed a couple? Yeah, not at this point. Would have been with the seven-yard snap spot. You probably would have been looking at about a 32-yarder. So now back that up and make it about a 37-yarder. 
hard to see from our vantage point exactly where that ball is being put down. Yeah, but we, we've seen Austin, I mean, Austin Williams struggle, struggle um, in this season already. What kind of thoughts are going through your head at this point if you're a kicker and you've struggled? He gets that one up. That one looks like it's right down the middle unless I'm missing something. It is good. So Austin Williams converts first field goal of the game. 45 nothing. That'll feel good for the UWF special teams and their kicker. You're watching Argo football on the UWF Sports Network. What does Argo spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pregame grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. Jumping back in here to Blue Wahoo Stadium. Argo's on the board again. This time a field goal. Austin Williams converts and snaps his streak of 10 straight missed field goals for Austin Williams. So there's, there's some good news out of that, you know, to, to make a 37-yarder right down the middle. Strong leg. Colton Norris on to kick this thing off. He gets into this one. It's going to be returnable. Caught inside the five after a couple of juke moves. And oh, that's... Got the hand of the face mask right there. I don't know if any flags flew or not, but yeah, a nice one the end of the play there. Nice job of coverage. It's going to be that because uh, the return man, Bernard West, bringing that kick back out. He got it into the face mask of the defender who was there to make the tackle. We do have uh, some news to pass along. Andre Duncombe, the linebacker, has a hand injury, jammed a finger, potentially. Not quite sure what, what the injury is out the rest of the game for precaution. Hopefully Andre's okay and it's something we can get fixed right up. And it is a offensive face mask, which is not one you see all that often. Yeah, we've seen Andre come out with uh, his jersey on, but no pads underneath. So you had to wonder something. Uh, you had to think something was going on when the second half started. Nice job, by the way, of Durante Jordan just sitting down in front of the ball carrier there, the return man, and, and really good positional defense and and making that play, forcing the, the penalty, which is going to back the Dragons up deep into their own end, which is a place that they are not unfamiliar with at this, this point of the ball game. They've been deep a couple times in their own end, really right under their own goalpost. This has the makings, Jamie Smith, of, of, of a safety play. Yeah, and I'm, I'm not saying I know what's going to happen. but You have to wonder if Doolin uh, decides to dial up pressure here, maybe a zone blitz of some sort. Looks like it. Laurent's coming on the outside, a little inside handoff, and Josh Smiley's going to get there quick to make the tackle, along with Quentin Peebles, number 13, coming off the edge. Some names we haven't called a whole lot of tonight. Yeah, at that time you had Laurent coming off the edge, but Josh Smiley does a great job of filling that running lane and is able to come and bring him down. We're seeing some other guys into the game. Now you see uh, Terry Limehouse Jr. in there as well. We told you before the game he had to jump in and start in place of Henry Montgomery, who's out in concussion protocol. There's a quick out. Rembert makes the catch and looks like a fire drill. Stop, drop, and roll. Pick up a couple yards. A little breathing room now for this Dragons offense, although they face a third down and a couple yards. 
Yeah, just a quick pass that time to Rembrook, Rembrandt on the outside. And uh, we've seen that last drive when they tried to make a quick pass. This time it goes for a little bit more. So third and two. This is a big play. Your offense needs to come up with something wide open over there. Nice throw and catch, and that's going to be enough to move the sticks. And really, one of the better, one of the more productive plays we've seen, that's Rayshawn Gaines on the catch from Richardson. Moving that football, moving the chains. And they needed that one because if they were going to have to punt again, it would have been putting UWF back on offense in their own in their territory, in the Dragons' territory. Yeah, Gaines does a nice job of picking up yards after the catch to give VUL a little breathing room and have a little momentum in this drive. Another quick out over there to that side in front of their own bench. It's Rembert this time, and he is gang tackled. Lots of guys flying to the football over there. Ty Cox from a defensive end position getting outside quick, as is Laurent. And yeah, Demaria Gibbons in on that play Gibbons. also. Had his feet. Not a lot not a lot of room to run after the catch. Maybe two or three yards on that play. There you go. Second down and about eight. After that, short gain. Three receivers out here wide to the right for Richardson. Single on the other side, and he's going to go that way. That throw is in front of Rembert. Did he get his hands to it? Yeah, he did. They're going to say a completion, but it'll be... For the first down. Yeah, it looks like they're yeah. going to give him the first down. Rimmer does a nice job of using his hands to pull that ball right off of the ground as it was on its way to the turf. You almost wonder if, if Richardson could hit Rimbert in stride, what might happen? Because a lot of times Rimbert's just kind of having to make catches off to the side or below his waist, and those are always tough. This time going deep as he got hit, and he had a man. That's Marcus right. Clayton over there on the coverage, but he had a guy that goes off the hands of Saeed Sadibi. That could have been the big play that Lynchburg is desperately in need of. Nice throw from Richardson. Look at this ball. Puts it right there. Good coverage by Clayton, though. Yeah, Clayton does a great job of battling through the end. And, but, I mean, a good throw by Richardson, who put it right on the money, gave his receiver a shot that time. And he had some pressure in his face, some guys coming right up the middle. We are at four. 55 left to play, 45 nothing here in the third quarter. Rembert, the target over there, but the throw is, is way off. Rembert's pointing back in at the defender. No flag, no on, flag the on the play. No flag on the play, though. Both, both players pointing at each other. Johnny Rembert has to be tired because I think he's been out there for every offensive play for Virginia Lynchburg, whereas, you know, he's probably over there watching when UWF offense is out there thinking, man, they got eight guys. <laughs> Right receiver rolling in and out. Yeah, just a little bit more depth on the WF side. Third down play, third and ten. Nice design play. Dump into space and a big positive gain. That's the first time I think we've seen. I think he's still going to be a little, maybe a little, be a little short. short. That's the first time, though, this game we've seen um, the guy who i got to find his number on the roster. That's Timothy Timothy Edwards, who's listed at a tight end, but he wears number 23. So you're looking for a running back. You know, it's Edwards with the catch. And they did a nice job of floating a route right in front of him to create this space that he was in. But, yeah, to not, to not pick up the first down, now you're looking at fourth and one. This is a, a make-or-break play. you got to come up with something here to get the first down and keep these sticks moving. Play clock down to seven. We'll see if they snap it. They do. Richardson is back to pass, and he's going deep. And he's got a man, but he's... Vastly underthrows him. Well, that'll turn the ball over on downs. Interesting call there that you don't go for something short, that you throw the ball deep on fourth and one. We are moving over to the UWF offense. 3.58 left to play here. 45 nothing in the third quarter of this one. You're watching Argo football on the UWF Sports Network. <laughs>
What does Argo Spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pre-game grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. Today. You're listening to UWF Football on ESPN Penn. We're back with you. Blue Wahoo Stadium, Will Kennedy, Jamie Smith on CST, Cox Sports TV, and ESPN Pensacola on the radio, simulcasting UWF football as we are under four minutes to play here now in the third quarter of this one. The Argos lead Virginia Lynchburg 45 to nothing. And back on offense after a fourth and one play, Jamie, that didn't quite work out the way the Dragons drew it up on the chalkboard before the game. Sets up J.C. Robles, who's in at quarterback for Austin Reed. So Reed, we're going to imagine his day is done. He had another solid game. Tonight, it's Robles' turn to impress. Here we go. Second down and about five. After another positive gain on first down, Robles dancing again. He's just going to chunk one up, and he's got a man. Spinning out of that is Q, Quentin Randolph. Impressed by Robles' ability to extend plays and make a throw. This time, he just kind of sees a guy downfield and flicks it to him. Yeah, does a great job of staying in the pocket and trusting his receiver also. And Randolph able to come down with that ball. And J.C., as you can see, extending the play, standing in the pocket, giving the Randolph a chance to go up and make a play. And he does, picking up the first down for the Argos. Jervon Newton went for five on first down. That play picks up the, the first down, as Jamie mentioned, moving the stick. So here they go again, threatening to score some more. That was 15 yards on that throw and catch. Robles with time this time. And there you see the strong arm. But it, he was staring down his receiver there, and you saw a defender break on the football and potentially have an opportunity to pick that off. Evan Mitchell was the target. Yeah, he was looking over at Mitchell, clearly wanted to go to him that time, but still was able to fit the ball just over the defensive back's head for VUL. Thought maybe Mitchell may have had a chance to come down with it, but it looked like the ball was just a little too far out in front. Maybe got tipped by the defender, and sometimes as a receiver you're looking at that football, and if it just changes that spin even a little, it can be a hard one to catch. Here we go. Second and 10 now. Robles takes the snap. Little inside handoff. And tough Good. run there yeah, by bounce, Shamar bounce Mason. to the outside. Shamar Mason's in, so we've seen our fourth running back check into the game. Mason's going to pick up a couple yards. It'll set up a third down. Let's see what the spot is they give him there. They're probably going to give him two yards on that one. So Our first look at Mason tonight. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, really, again, we've seen Mason in some spots earlier in the year. When you've got four guys that can run the ball, it's hard to find touches for everybody to really get everybody the, the run that they're going to want and, and the, the number of times to, to carry the football. So third and eight. Robles back to pass. That thing comes out hot. And ah, Tate, the tough night for Tate continues. That one's a little bit low, but you know he's going to be disappointed with not catching that pass. Yeah, and just uh, just the ball a little low, but, you know, Tate makes those catches, and that's usually a normal catch and run for Tate, but – Looks really? like he tries yeah. to take off just a, a little bit quicker than normal, and uh, that'll go down as an incompletion. Really, yeah, really more at his waist. I thought it was a little lower than it ended up being on the replay there. Tate, you know, will t he'll take that hard. He's one of those players. This is a guy who separated his shoulder scoring a touchdown against Carson Newman and played the next week. So tough kid and really a cerebral guy. He's in grad school as well. Here comes Austin Williams on for another field goal attempt, and he pulls that one again wide left, similar to the one we saw earlier. So... One for four now, field goal attempts in this game. And Austin Williams is still standing out there. You see him out there on the field with his long snapper and his holder. I, what must be going through that young man's mind? And this is a kid who's a, a heck of a student as well and really a fun personality and a guy that when things are going well, you love and you just you feel bad for the kid. Yeah, sometimes when things are happening like this, you, you start to correct things that you, you start to overcorrect things. Yeah. And uh, you start to think too much. And uh, when that happens, that kind of complicates problems. And uh, you just, I mean, you have to have a, you, you want to build his, build his confidence. But, I mean, moving forward into GSE play, you have, to, you have to figure out if, hey, do I still continue to go with this kid? Or is there another option for us? Crowd hanging in there tonight. Look at this. I mean, these folks are, you know, it's always fun when you're ahead 45 to nothing. But kudos to them for, for sticking around. So the ball goes over after the missed field goal. 
Virginia Lynchburg back on the field. Another quick out. Really been their bread and butter play is that quick throw to the sideline and try to get a guy in space and let him run a little bit. That is Darrell Hairston, wide receiver, catching a quick pass from Richardson, picking up a couple yards on first down. The book is closed on Austin Reed. We will assume for tonight, 18 of 28. 64% completion, 274 yards, three touchdowns. Did have the one interception, but that was the first offensive play of the game. A really solid night, a QBR of 174.7. Not bad. Oh, boy. <laughs> and he shed him right over into his quarterback. That's going to be big, that man. hurts. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be DeMarco, DeMarco Ar Artis. Yeah, Artis was in on that. Man. Matthew Gotell, big number 90 in there as well. Look at that. Let's just all... Meet at the quarterback again. Richardson's going to need an ice bath after this one. Yeah, him and Rembrandt is probably going to share an ice bath. <laughs> it's a tough one. Uh, a tough night for them. We don't know if, if we'll see Anthony Johnson again, but if we do not, how about this line? 11 carries, 85 yards, 7.7 .7 per carry. That is incredibly solid. Here's the defense again. Hello. That's there. We haven't called his name much, but there's Chandler Ferguson, who really dominated play last week against Shorter. The linebacker, number 11, had an interception last week, led the team in tackles, and he's all over this one. And he sniffed that screen Ooh. out from the get-go, not full, not going upfield, and uh, he sniffed Newman, Newman out of the backfield from, from the from, from the word go. Out of Delray Beach, the sophomore, redshirt sophomore, six foot two twenty-five. He's a compact young man. We had a chance to sit down. I did with, uh, talk with Chandler, and it's a uh, uh, player feature that you'll see on the Coach Shinnick show on CSTV this week. Uh, wonderful to get to know him a little bit. Here's a punt, so the defense does its job. Karan Ashley's going to feel this thing in his own end, make a couple guys miss, gets across the Argo logo, dances around, and finally is dragged down in VUL territory at the, about the 49-yard line. So a couple nice returns tonight. We're, we're, we're seeing the kick return, punt return game start to develop a little bit, gel a little bit. Yeah, and that's a good return by Ashley. And you'd like to see that moving forward, especially as I, 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 mentioned, I mentioned it again as we continue to get deeper into this GSC schedule. And um, Ashley's not, a, not one of those guys who's afraid to return. And uh, he's got some big shoes to fill. Antoine Griffin, the aggressive yeah. returner as well when he, was, when he was here. By the way, back to back weeks as the offense takes over again. Q Randolph. Quentin with three receptions, 100 yards. So he's gone 100 yards in two straight games. Really turning into the big play guy. Inside handoff. Goes for a couple yards. Falling forward is Jervon Newton. Robles still in there at quarterback. And that's going to bring us to the end of the third quarter. 45 nothing. now. Your score. You're watching the Argos, listening to the Argos on the UWF Sports Network. You can't stop it, that undeniable charge. So bright, so loud. It rips through the clutches of mediocrity. It breaks down walls, blazes past old ways of thinking. It's creativity, pure electric energy. What will you do with it? The University of West Florida, no limits. Look at that. Five glorious inches of Whataburger. Fresh 100% beef stacked high with melted cheese and fresh cut veggies. But what if it's too much fresh beef? Stacked too high with too much melted cheese and too many fresh cut veggies. Well, we have a four inch burger like a lot of other places. We just call it a junior. Good thing there's a burger made just for you. Good thing there's Whataburger. In an emergency, especially a life-threatening emergency such as a stroke or heart condition, every second matters. As the region's only comprehensive stroke center, you can trust Ascension Sacred Heart Emergency Care teams to work quickly to identify, understand, and treat your condition. And we connect you to the follow-up care that's right for you. Find 24-7 ER care near you at GetSacredHeartCare.com. Bringing you back in here to Blue Wahoo Stadium, ready to roll the fourth quarter of this game. 45 nothing is the score. University of West Florida Argonauts on top of the Virginia University Lynchburg Dragons. Quick stoppage of play as soon as we come back. It gives you the opportunity. You know what, feel like you're 
shaking up your shake routine a little bit. If you want to do that, Whataburger's salted caramel shake is back and just what you need. The perfect balance of salty and sweet, a tasty addition to the dessert menu. So head into Whataburger, try one today, but hurry. They're only for a limited time. Here we go. Second down and eight. Robles back to pass. Finds his man out in the flat. Another name we haven't called this year. That is Willie Baker out of Lakeland, Florida. The redshirt sophomore receiver, number 17, with his first catch of the season. Yeah, I mean, a lot of guys getting in on the act tonight. Willie Baker, just another, add another name to those to that receiving core. And uh, J.C. Robles fired us over there. A, a nice little comeback route run by Baker and able to pick up about four or five on that play. Robles getting, getting it done here tonight. That goes for seven yards. That's going to bring up a third and about one. Quick handoff, nice cutback. Dancing around and picking up a couple yards is Jervon Newton. That's going to move the sticks. First down, Argos. And great vision by Newton that time. The run was initially a stretch to the right side of the field, but Newton able to see some running lanes open back up to the left side, and great vision picks him up. That's one of those things down. you hear, Jamie, people talk about with running backs all the time is vision. You know, some guys have it, some guys don't, and at variant levels. And being able to see something happen almost before it does and then get your body in that direction. Not as easy as it sounds, and it sounds hard. <laughs> Harder than it seems. Here we go, first down. Argos on the move again. Ro J.C. Robles in the quarterback. He's looking downfield. That ball gets tipped at the line of scrimmage. He had a man in a spot he liked, but somebody got a big mitt on that thing. I think he was looking downfield for Amari Dubose. Yeah, he had Amari Dubose on a comeback route. Passed the sticks. Would have picked up another first down, but one of the v VUL linemen able to get a mitt on it. Jamie, are you, are you old enough for albums, like vinyl record kind of stuff? I think that might be past my time. Well, they used to say, you know, you have to go in to find the deep cuts on the album, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. We're in deep cut time in this game because guys <laughs> are coming in off the bench that we haven't seen their numbers yet this year. Yep. They're, they're running routes and, yep. and checking into the game. So it's that time of the game in a 45 nothing game. Robles with the handoff. Nice move. Shamari Mason. Puts a spin on, too, after a beautiful cutback. I think he was thinking about heading to the house, right? Yeah, he was trying to make the most of that opportunity. He almost had it. I mean, <laughs> the defender for VUL was able to just chip him enough to throw him off Look his balance. This. You'll see that spin move there. Ooh. He completely <laughs> shakes. He, I think he's mad because he almost kept his fit, footing. He almost put a hand down and a foot down and was able to, to stay up. Yeah. So Mason will move the sticks with completely that. Completely shakes Marvin Grunchy for, for uh, VUL. Here we go. First down. Just outside the 25, we'll call it the 26. First down and 10 again. The handoff got stuck for a second, but Mason is working hard as another helmet goes flying. Might that, want to check those chin yeah, straps. That's on that yeah, I was kind of wondering what's up with the chin straps for for the Dragons because helmets have been flying. That's probably literally the sixth time tonight we've seen a helmet go loose at the end of a play. Just under 13 minutes to play here. 45 nothing is the score in this one. This is the first of three straight at home for this UWF football team. They will have Mississippi College in for a 6 o'clock kick next Saturday on the 28th. Another handoff. Another run off the delay and the misdirection. You're seeing this offensive line. you got some new names that have checked into the game on this offensive line as well, looking to push some people around. I see Ethan Cruz in there at right tackle. I think Dalton Simpler has checked in at center as well. Yeah, a bunch of new guys coming in. You see these guys continue to come in and on off the field. Hard to keep track of it now. Yeah, Nate Archie is in at uh, left tackle now, replacing Sam Antoine out there. So these, you know, these are guys that they work together as a unit in practice, obviously. Sometimes maybe not all of them, second and thirds, and that misfire there, the pass was a little bit low and at the ankles for DeBose. Robles would like to have that one back again. That's going to bring up a fourth down, and we're going to see a new kicker. We will. Yeah, we'll get, yeah, we'll get the new kicker after a couple failed attempts. Alex Virgilio is checking into the game. Number 42. Yeah, the redshirt Braden. freshman. Yeah, redshirt freshman out of Braden in Florida. He's going to get his opportunity here, and he's going to come in, and he's going to, he's going to try about a 37-yarder himself. So we'll see what he's got. I mean, there's been some competition kicking-wise. Straight and, shot. And this is a guy that they've liked, that he's kicked well in the fall camp. It's long enough. And it looks good. And it is up and it is good. So Alex Virgilio 
Not easy for me to say. He makes it happen. 48-0 now as he converts the 37-yarder. We'll take a break here. You're watching Argo Football on the UWF Sports Network. What does Argo Spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pre-game grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. Back with you, Blue Wahoo Stadium. Argos lead this one 48 to nothing. Will Kennedy and Jamie Smith on Cox Sports TV, ESPN Pensacola simulcast, and the UWF Sports Network. Set for a kickoff here in this ball game. Colton Norris is out. Alex Vergilio just made the 37-yard field goal as the second kicker, place kicker in. Norris boots this one towards the corner, and it's touched and then taken out of bounds. So that's... That's a mistake as a returner. You let that go. You take the ball at the 35. Instead, you're about to start inside your own five. Got a second here to talk about all, you know, some of the other stuff that's going on at the University of West Florida with fall sports right now. Busy weekend. Women's volleyball at a tournament up in Aiken, South Carolina. They take three of four matches up there, beating Francis Marion along the way. Also getting a couple wins today. UNC Pembroke and beating Erskine in volleyball. They lost one to the home team. South Carolina Aiken. Men's soccer goes over across state lines and beats Spring Hill 2-1 to one this afternoon. And then cross country, men's and women's cross country, they have not hosted a meet on campus in something like 15 years. They did that this morning if you were up early, 7 o'clock. Both teams finishing second. So great performances at home. It's a good time to be at Argo. And Tuesday night, Big volleyball match coming up. It is the, the blackout match on campus. This is a really cool one. They wear these black uniforms, the women's volleyball team. They turn the lights out. You got glow sticks, all that kind of stuff. It's like a Tuesday night party up in the field house out at the University of West Florida. So look forward to that one coming up here against UAH, University of Alabama Huntsville. 5 o'clock start on Tuesday the 24th. UAH, the only team to beat the Argos in Gulf South Conference play in the regular season last year as the women's volleyball team won regular season, won the conference tournament, tennis, soccer, you know, 101 conference championships now for this athletics program. I don't think people realize that, that's, a, that's a big number. That's a huge number, and yeah. they continue to crank them out. Trophy room is getting crammed. It is. We've redone the, uh, the, the front of the field house and made some more room to display gonna with, have to. with nice lighting some of those trophies. Here we go. Fourth quarter action just at 12 minutes now. And there's that defense again jumping in there, stuffing the run. Gail Laurent coming off the corner with a big hit. He's as been busy tonight. He really has. You, you love to see this. You're seeing guys obviously get more comfortable in the system and kind of find their niche and find their role. It's going to be huge in the next couple of weeks, Jamie. Oh, definitely. And, then, I mean, we play Mississippi College next week and Delta State after that. And, I mean, and then you get into the big dogs of the GSC in, you know, West Georgia and Valdosta State. So, that defense is going to have to come up big there. Penalty flags are thrown down. I think we have a new quarterback in for Lynchburg. It is Sherman Brown. Number two is checked into the game. He dances around, picks up some yards, but a flag was down early on that play. We'll see what the call is. It may have been something on the outside. Yeah, where this flag is is kind of an unusual spot. Defense gets called offsides. 
A little bit of that aggression jumping in there as these guys are chomping at the bit. And you're still seeing, I mean, I'm seeing guys out there that, that were out there at the beginning of the game along with some new guys mi mixed in. You got Limehouse, Terry Limehouse Jr. out there at the back of this defense, but I'm seeing some of the defensive linemen. You're starting to see some other guys rotate in and come into the game a little bit. I see uh, Brandon Pennerton, big defensive lineman, has checked into the game as well, number 51. Brown out of his own end zone finds Rembert. That's going to be a, a positive gain, but still leaving you. No, it's going to move the sticks. Nice, nice throw and catch out to near the 20. And every minute of sleep Rembert gets tonight, he deserves. I mean, he's been a busy guy for that VUL offense. It seems like every other play that they target him, and um, he's been a very busy guy for that offense tonight. I might want to ride back on a different bus if I could. Yeah, it's only the sixth first down of the game. For Lynchburg tonight, UWF defense has been solid. Sherman Brown started the season as the starting quarterback. He's 6'2", 200 pounds. He's a big kid. He runs here and takes a pop on the outside. Marcus Clayton and some other Argos coming up to meet him there. But you're seeing a, kind of a different look than Richardson at quarterback. Yeah, Rembert has nine receptions tonight. The next closest receiver has two. So that goes to show you. Nice job by Marcus Clayton shedding the blocker out there, the receiver, and, and getting to the football and making the play, making the tackle there. You see Nate Holloway, number 39, coming in to help on that tackle as well. So here we go, second and eight. Three receivers out left for Lynchburg. There's another bad snap down at the ankles. That's going to give the defense time to get there. Brown is keeping on his feet looking downfield and then just throws the ball into the ground. Probably would have been better if he would have tucked that up and run for a few yards. Yeah, trying to find a guy downfield, but just a tough throw, especially when you're trying to throw across your body like that on your back foot. It makes for a very tough throw. I see Alex Wilcox in the game on that defensive line, number 94. You're also seeing big Kerry Samidi in the game, number 93. You know, a lot of guys, so this is, you're starting to see that bench empty out here and guys get, get some game action, which is important because you never know when you may need to call somebody's number and you want them to have some game experience. Snaps a little bit off, but Brown's got it. He's got a man downfield. The ball is going to end up being incomplete. Good coverage over there. Rembert comes up. He's screaming for a flag, but Clayton, Clayton's had a good game tonight, Jamie. He's broken up balls downfield. He's been around the football, tackling a lot, and, and really run game, pass game, he's been there. Yeah, and Clayton, we've seen him more exclusively in the special teams here uh, over the past couple of years, but this year he's featured in that defense more, and he's done a great job at the cornerback position tonight, breaking up a lot of a lot of close balls. Defense holds again. It's going to force another punt, another chance to see if we can get a return on. A couple guys checking into the game. Karan Ashley is back there. Two two men back to return this kick. Looks like it may also be TJ Jackson or not. Block punt, and it's in for the touchdown. Just like that, the special teams we just talked about him. Marcus Clayton, you deserve it, kid. Another score. We've seen a pick six, and now a special teams play for a touchdown. The Argos doing it in all phases. Take a look at the replay. Yeah, scoop and score. Just get there. Nice job. Jordan Ashley, or Coming actually. Off the corner. That's, yeah, that was, we just said those two guys. Nate Holloway. Yeah, Nate Holloway. They combined on a tackle. Holloway blocks it. Clayton scoops it up, keeps his feet. And takes it in for six. Just at the right place at the right time. And how convenient. We were just talking about him there. I know Coach Shoemaker down there, you know, works with the special teams too, is going to be happy with that play. They spent a lot of time in practice working on these kind of things. Return game and the potential block game. Regilio comes in for the extra point, bangs that thing through. 55 double nickels on the board. Argos lead this one. You gotta love it if you're an Argos fan. Tough night for the Lynchburg Dragons. You're watching Argo football and listening on the UWF Sports Network. You got me falling hard, sweet baby. You got me falling hard for you. It's you. I felt this way before. You know it's you. It's you. You got me more and more. Oh, you got me falling hard. 
Here at CPC, you're not just a customer, you're part of the family. We operate seven offices throughout the Florida Gulf Coast and Alabama regions with nearly 100 employees to best serve you, the customer. So thank you to all of the thousands of businesses who have helped to make us a leader in the office technology industry for more than 45 years. We will continue to provide a level of service that can't be copied and look forward to the bright future that lies ahead for our communities, cities, and country. What does Argo Spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pre-game grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. We bring you back in here to Blue Wahoo Stadium. Will Kennedy and Jamie Smith. Those guys in the ROTC are tired, man. We were looking at some push-ups earlier. They had a cheerleader up on top of the push-up board doing, I think, 28. Now you're up to 55. I don't want to be next in line, Jamie Smith. No, me neither. I do neither. not want to be the ne next man up in this situation. <laughs> yeah, I'll take my, uh, I'll take my, my seat up here. <laughs> Kick off. Booted deep inside the five. Another chance to return this thing out. Couple moves, but then there's that special teams again flying. Terry Limehouse Jr. flying down the field to make a tackle, limiting that return for Rico Williams. He's dragged down. That'll set up Lynchburg again. And Coach Shue fist pump, a chest pumping his guys down there. You can tell how excited <laughs> he is for the special teams unit. And like you mentioned it earlier, they work they work very hard on that on that aspect in in practice. As a fellow bearded fellow, I I'm, I'm impressed. Coach Shoemaker's done a nice job of growing out the beard this year. Solid. It's a solid look. Will Kennedy approved. I, definitely so. Here we go. So back on offense again. Sherman Brown back in at quarterback for the second series here. As Lynchburg would just love to possess the ball for a little bit. Brown's going to keep it, tuck his head up, and go. Definitely more of a threat running, and they're running some designed runs for Sherman Brown here. Yeah, and Sherman Brown, the more athletic quarterback, and like you mentioned, a couple of designed runs just to get any type of life into this VUL offense um, as they continue their season. Well, really, their defense didn't have to go back on the field there after the block punt and scooped up for the touchdown, so it's really more a case of the offense going right back out there, so I'm trying to give your defense a break, but they haven't been on the field in a little while. Man in motion in front of the set here. Sherman Brown, the quarterback for Lynchburg, trying to find something, anything. This one is almost intercepted, in and out of the hands of the defensive back over there, and that is Keon Holder. Yeah, Keon Holder, number six, junior out of Miami, Florida. He'll want that one back. Let's see what happened here. Oh, and you know you, there's nobody in front of you. It's all green to all the end green. zone. Yeah. Look, he's, he's holding his face mask like, ah, he's that was my that minute. Back. Yeah, definitely. These are guys, a lot of times, we were talking third or fourth depth chart guys. They don't get a whole lot of run. That may be your opportunity to take something to the house and, and make a name for yourself here. That'll bring up third and seven. Struggles continue for Virginia Lynchburg. Here comes the pressure. Brown's in trouble, and he's going to go down under a sea of Argos as Quentin Peebles, number 13, is in there on the quarterback. Gail Laurent, name we've called all night long, also coming off the edge to make this play. Look at this. Off the edge, Laurent's all over him. Peebles is inside. A whole lot, no, of, whole yeah, lot of blue. Another great effort by this UWF. They've really swarmed tonight. You're seeing multiple guys at the football on almost every play. Yeah, this defense is just pinning their ears back now, and, I mean, can you blame them? They just smell blood in the water, and... And, and just, just going to get it now. Really almost in the exact same spot we were just a few seconds ago on a block punt for a touchdown. This time Taylor's going to get the kickoff. It's a pretty decent one. Karan Ashley calls a fair catch, weaves through a few guys, comes up and makes it inside the 40. So good field position again. We'll see. It looks like J.C. Robles is coming back onto the field with this offense, looking for his next opportunity. You know he'd love to throw a touchdown pass tonight. And, he and would. And get, get that opportunity to, to air it out. You know, this is always one of those situations as a head coach. Steve Spurrier used to, when he coached at the University of Florida, you know, Division One's a little bit different. You're trying to jockey for position in, in the polls. And that was BSC back then. And they would, yeah, they would always say, you know, why you know, he ran up the score on so-and-so, and he'd basically say, it's not my job, you know, to, to pull off 
the dogs and call off the dogs and pull the reins up. You know, you're asking guys that are second and third team to come in and not play. It, it just doesn't work that way. So you, I, I imagine Coach Shinnick is not going to just hand the ball off every play. And this one's a jet sweep. Another wrinkle from the bag. Nice little gainer to the outside. Yeah, first time we've seen a quarterback under center tonight, yeah. maybe even this season. Nice job by Anthony Manning, I think. Was that number 16? Yeah, Manning takes that and picks up a few yards. This is a redshirt freshman out of the Orlando area. Deep roster. I mean, you got to imagine a lot of these guys who we haven't seen much of are really talented young players, but they've just got guys ahead of them that are more experienced and have that, that game action. And that just gets you more excited even for the future of this team. Robles keeps rolling out. He's got a man down the field. If he can get it to him, and he does, staying in bounds and into the end zone, that is Mitchell. And we just said J.C. Robles is looking for his opportunity to throw a touchdown. There it is, and his offensive linemen and tight end are all over him. <laughs> and that's a, good, that's a great throw by Robles and a great ball. Great touch that he, as he displayed, rolling to us right there. Just put the fluff on the ball and just enough for Mitchell to roll out and run under that, run under that ball. And uh, another touchdown for the Argos. I think they may be approaching their all-time scoring record I am just here. told we have just broken that record. It was 55. J.C. Robles with his first UWF touchdown of his career to Evan Mitchell. Beautiful play there. 30 yards on the touchdown strike, awaiting the PAT. Push this lead out to 62 nothing. The kick is up, the kick is strong, and the kick is good. Alex Virgilio, Virgilio makes it count. I've got to get used to that name because I've got a feeling we're going to be calling that a lot more. Yeah. The Argos now are on top, 62 nothing. Who's up? Who's up on the push-up board? I can see them down there. They're getting ready to make this thing happen. There we are. Rotating oh, a lot boy. of guys. <laughs> Big Red got called out here. Man. I, if I'm the guy's uh, CO of the ROTC program, I'm giving him a day off tomorrow. Anybody that goes after 50, you may get a, a break from PT. Yeah, they are being challenged <laughs> tonight. This guy, I got a feeling it's going to be a, a lively downtown Pensacola scene tonight after this one, Jamie. With, it should be. With uh, you know, the, the crowd we had here, and they've started to thin out a little bit, as happens in a game in a blowout like this, but I'm sure – a lot of the students, a lot of the alumni are, are, are drifting off to some of the establishments not too far from yeah. here to have an adult beverage or two. Getting a head start. Getting yeah. a head start on the night. I keep hearing that there are no laws when you're drinking claws, Jamie. <laughs> Is that a real thing? I'm not sure. You I, don't know? I, I'm not sure. That may be a, a newer generation type thing. <laughs> I'm sure there got to be some laws. Yeah, I, I, I would imagine that. I don't are. think that's a good phrase to go by. Props to my man for, for banging out 62 push-ups right there. Here we go, kicking off again. Austin Williams in to kick this one off. He's going to bang this one deep into the end zone. So the first touchback there of the night, that'll put the ball out on the 25 as Williams gets into that one. I'm sure he was ready to let some aggression loose on a football there. 7.32 left to play here in this ball game. 62 nothing, as we just were noted. This is the new record. 62 points in a game for this UWF offense. We've continued to see them click, whether it's Austin Reed, now J.C. Robles. Really, the, the running game has been super impressive tonight. And again, you said it, Jamie, early on, the words of Coach Shinnick, basically, do what you got to do. You know, play to your capability. Don't worry about the opponent. Do you feel like we've seen that tonight? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, the, the slogan is, if it's not how we play, it's not who we play, it's how we play. And, they, I mean, I've showed that tonight. I mean, defense pitching a shutout. And, uh, I mean, this is what you've expected as, you know, the defense comes up with a fumble almost oh, on almost. this play. But, uh, Another this helmet is, on the ground. Yeah, and this is what you almost expect of a team like UWF. I mean, a, a, a caliber, the caliber team that UWF is and the caliber team that VUL uh, is you kind of expected this, and you'd like to see this from your team. And you really love seeing there's I mean, Gail Laurent has been a monster tonight, even this late in the game, still flying to the football. From behind the play, in front of the play, doesn't matter. DeMarco Artis checking back into that game as well. So you're seeing some guys who, who, you know, have played early in this ball game coming back in. You're seeing some reserves in here as well. Sherman Brown awaits the snap, two receivers out to his left. Hands off to the big fella. We don't see too many fullbacks anymore. That is big Calvin Roan, number 34. You know, big guys like that, Mike Tolbert in the NFL, I think of him as, as an example. You, you can't really chop your feet a whole lot when you're 5'10", 230, 
You, you got to put your head down and get upfield. No, you got to go barrel down. I mean, <laughs> head forward and, and, and get to it. And that r big running back that has some, some success in the NFL reminds me of uh, Mike Allstott uh, for the Buccaneers. Big boy, yeah. Who had uh, a lot of success over the years there in Tampa Bay. 25 first downs now for this UWF offense when they've had the ball and, and really uh, 343 yards of passing offense, 100-plus rushing. Throw down the field, good coverage again. You see these UWF defensive backs jumping in. That was a nice job by Diarva Brown getting over the top of the receiver. I think he got his hands to the football there on that play. Yeah, reading the quarterback's eyes the whole way. Um, he, had to, he had the safety uh, safety help over the top also. 343, 167 yards rushing. You were saying you know, that 500-yard mark is what you're looking for there above that offensively. Yeah, well over that, and what a job by this by this by this running back core tonight, to be able to come out and put up numbers like they did. It. More specifically, Anthony Johnson. Another punt is forced. This one up in the air, kind of hanging. It bounced. I think it bounced off a Lynchburg player, and it'll finally be down in the UWF end, about the 45. Six minutes left, roughly here in this ball game. 62 to nothing is the score. You're listening to the UWF Sports Network. You got me falling hard, sweet baby. You got me falling hard for you. It's you. I felt this way before. You know it's you. It's you. You got me more and more. Oh, you got me falling hard. Here. At CPC, you're not just a customer, you're part of the family. We operate seven offices throughout the Florida Gulf Coast and Alabama regions with nearly 100 employees to best serve you, the customer. So thank you to all of the thousands of businesses who have helped to make us a leader in the office technology industry for more than 45 years. We will continue to provide a level of service that can't be copied and look forward to the bright future that lies ahead for our communities, cities, and country. What does Argo Spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pre-game grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. Crisp. Enjoy responsibly. Bud Light Beer, Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis, Missouri. Back here with you at Blue Wahoo Stadium. 6.04 left to go. 62 to nothing is the score. The UWF Argos out in front of Virginia Lynchburg. Huge in this one. Here we go. Sam Vaughn in at quarterback now. Hands that football off in the middle. So good to see. We were talking about that earlier in this game. When we see Sam Vaughn tonight, we have coming off Tommy John surgery. Vaughn's in the game. Nice little short handoff and inside run. For Shamari Mason, this running game has just been outstanding tonight. No matter who is playing on this offensive line, you're seeing that push up front. Yeah, and this running game is doing a great job. I mean, they've had over about, I mean, it has to be over four or five yards per carry. Absolutely. I mean, there haven't been that many attempts, really, and they, they've been effective every time. Vaughn with another handoff inside. Mason looks like he wants to break one. He picks up a first down on that carry. The quick feet, the burst, the acceleration. On any other team, Shamari Mason might be your starting running back. And as a freshman, a uh, true freshman at that, Shamari Mason, the smaller guy, but can get it done. And you can see he burst up the middle there. And this offense is averaging 5.8 yards per carry. That's a, I mean, that's a great number. When you can lean on your, on, your, on your rushing attack like that, that opens up things in the passing game. I think of some of the running backs that hurt this UWF team last year, and a lot of them were guys like – Shamari Mason, that style of runner, that type of body. This time he gets bottled up, but still spins off. Look at this play. This play is going to come up as a short gain, but when we when you see it, you're going to see the ability to not lose yardage, to take this initial hit as we see the replay. Look at this. Defenders in there, spin out of them, and pick up some yards. I mean, that's... And those are linebackers and yeah. D linemen that he's doing that to. Little Shamari Mason has a lot of heart. He's able to pick up... Well, that, they'll, they'll give him one on that, that play. That may be the most impressive one-yard game I've seen in a long, long time. So, Sam Vaughn in at quarterback here. Third quarterback tonight. Vaughn awaiting the snap on third 
or second and nine. Vaughn, first throw, finds a man. Looked like he was trying to step over the defender after he made the catch. Good throw. And it, people forget how good Sam Vaughn was last year as he finds Kashawn Showers. Is that Showers? I, 84, right? Yeah, that's going to be Kashawn Showers at tight end, the backup tight end to Jacquiri Jackson, able to haul that in. I'm just wondering because they listed he's listed a defensive lineman in this one thing, but it's got to be him as a tight end. 6'7". Big target. Big guy, yeah. He actually came in as a linebacker, moved to D-line, and is trying out another position here. He's getting a run tonight. Here we go. Dancing outside. There's Mason. We said he wanted to break one, and he comes close. If it wasn't for that last bump, he would have scored right there as he's bumped out inside the five. So impressed with Shamari Mason tonight as he has turned it up to another notch here. Sam Vaughn, by the way, he's third-string quarterback now behind Austin Reed, behind J.C. Robles. But let's not forget – I mentioned earlier, he started six games, won five last year. He beat UNA. Basically, his effort is what led us to a win over a Division I opponent last year. Right. He's no slouch. And this he looked good in that first half of uh, the MSU game as well. This is a kid that, you know, went to Georgia and ended up here. Inside run, going to come up just a little bit short as Mason's finally pushed back. He's probably a little tired after that last run. But Vaughn, Sam Vaughn hurt his knee in that win over UNA and then later ended up with a with an elbow injury and had to have the Tommy John surgery. And you wonder if Sam Vaughn stays healthy all of last year, how different that season may have been. It, what ended up being a six and five campaign may have been a playoff caliber type season. He's no slouch to have a Sam Vaughn as your quarterback as he keeps it and Sam Vaughn takes it into the end zone. Welcome back, Sam. The quarterback keeper from two yards out for the touchdown, and this is going to be very popular with this team. And these guys are getting and the up. fans that are left, yes, and sir. These guys are getting up for him there. That's a, that has to feel good if you're Sam Vine. And the road, I know Tommy John surgery, the road to getting back is tough. They tell you it's about a year process. He did it in about eight months. He was ready to go for fall camp and scores a touchdown here, and they're excited. He ran one in. It was actually he hurt his knee because he, he kept one similar to that, same side of the end zone against UNA up in Florence, Alabama. Took a hit as he went in, ended up banged up a little bit. Virgilio is on for the extra point. It is up, it is good. So we set a record, now we extend the record on the PAT. 68 nothing now, or 69, excuse me, as we tick on one more point. <laughs> Is Argy going to do the push-ups? Because Argy's coming out at this point. I think we're going to have to split these up here between the uh, members of the ROTC wow. squad. In I don't the, know in how much Argy's going to be yeah, able to do. That's not, that's, that's not a push-up. No. <laughs> there we go. No, but it's, it's, it's really great to see. And, and you feel good as a coaching staff, and you feel good, I'm sure, as teammates for Sam Vaughn to come in there and make this happen. And, you know, he could have said so – Sam Vaughn was at the University of Georgia, never played quarterback for the Georgia Bulldogs, Ran a lot of scout team, but actually pitched for the University of Georgia. Sam said, told me he was a side armor, threw about 88, 89, very tough to hit. So it was a you know, pretty, pretty good baseball player, played SEC baseball, had lots of appearances for Georgia, but wanted to play quarterback. Hadn't played in a meaningful game since high school. Comes down here, Mike Bodry gets hurt in the first possession against Carson Newman in the season opener right here in Blue Wahoo Stadium last year. So Sam Vaughn comes in, gets his opportunity, plays brilliantly at times, gets injured. The guy's in his 20s already, you know, <laughs> mid-20s. He could have easily said, I'm done. I'm in grad school, I, you know, Tommy John surgery. But he wanted to come back and play. And even knowing that he had these guys transfer in ahead of him on the depth chart, just to stick it out and to get that opportunity is a wonderful story. Oh, yeah, and you got to feel for a guy like that that's worked so hard to come back. That touchdown has to feel good. Austin Williams booting this thing deep. He, he caught that in play, did he not? He's got to run this out or he kneels it. That was an interesting moment. I don't think he quite knew what he was supposed to do there. Yeah, he, I'm surprised he didn't get hit by defender. I mean, he was still in play up until that knee. I'm almost wondering if the referees are like, ah, just put it out on the 25. <laughs> we're not going to – we could call something. We're not going to mess with it. So this Argo defense at this point, you know, that they're looking at the – keeping this game scoreless if they can. And really, at this point, you, you've really seen no reason to think that that will not happen, and especially as you bring in some of these new players, these guys who haven't played a whole lot. They're getting an opportunity to come into this game. They're hungry. They're hungry to make a play, hungry to leave their mark on this ball game. This has kind of turned into the game we kind of thought it might be, uh, and by that we mean a case where you're really getting to see the depth of this program 
and this team especially. Quick out over here on the side. Brown hits his receiver. And again, swarming defense. They force a fumble. <laughs> and they're excited. I mean, look at this. It looked like it's the first play of the game. Yeah, here we go again. Like they're just Side jumping up and down. Up. You're up 69 to nothing, and everybody's getting excited. Let's let's see the replay here. It was Jason Pitts, the running back, takes the catch. He's trying to make something happen and not really protecting that football a whole lot. And then kind of getting in there and great job on the camera on the replay. Nice job getting in there with the strip. It's number 44. Jumping in there. Aiden Sweat and then. Who falls on it, 56? Get one of the big boys. I don't even have a 56 on my roster in here. <laughs> Coming up with the fumble. We'll see who they credit that to. Vaughn back in there, quick handoff inside. It, it, they're having a tough time with the stat crew even keeping up because some of these numbers, they do not have a 56 on my roster. And that's, it makes it tough. Uh, but, but clearly there was a 56 on the field. <laughs> <laughs> we've, we've seen it. And hopefully the viewers out there can be our witnesses to that. I think sometimes when you, you, you know, West Florida, as all college programs do now, the Argos have a slew of different jerseys, different colors and options they can wear. And sometimes you don't have all the numbers in the Navy that you do in the green, which, by the way, we don't ever want to see again when we're trying to call a game, <laughs> or the white ones. Inside handoff. Mason is just making stuff happen. Even when he gets hit, the legs are still churning full speed. They it's are. beautiful. They are. And you love to see that, especially in your running back. I mean, those legs continue to keep continue to pound. And Mason, the smaller guy, but a faster guy. We have a VUL player down here. Yeah, man, man injured on the field. But, yeah, Ma Mason really has that explosion. The, the top, and you see this with running backs. How quickly can you get into your top gear? Mason is there literally on the second step. Yeah, second or third step, he's in it. And it's tough to stop a guy like that, especially in open space. He has been dynamic tonight, to say the least. As has this entire UWF offense. And the numbers, you know, by the time this is all said and done, the numbers are going to be piling up. Take a quick peek around kind of while we have a moment here with a player down on the field at some of the other games that are taking place not finals yet but we can tell you we have a score out of clinton mississippi right now this is a third quarter score and this is just the latest we have through their website 26 to 21 mississippi college is on top of north greenville so that'll be the team the choctaws will be the team to come in here next week and that was a good game over there last year yeah that um, was a that was a barn burner right up to the end there we fought we ended up pulling it out but that Mississippi College team gave us a good battle down there in Clinton. And they've got a little quarterback who kind of reminds you of Carson Newman and, and, and you know, made some difficult things happen, made it difficult for this Argo defense last, last year. Here's the game that we're kind of keeping an eye on. Everybody is around D2 football right now. Fourth quarter, about three minutes left. Valdosta State leads West Alabama 37-27. That's number one against number 20 in the nation. Valdosta Trying to hold on to go to 3-0 and in that ball game as we pick back up on the field here. Florida Tech and Delta State, 28-27 in the fourth quarter, the last score we have in that game. We'll try to update that one for you as we move along. And then West Georgia trying to find a score out of this West Georgia game right now. Trying to navigate their website. It's not easy. It's no goargos.com is all I'm going to say, Jamie. Yeah, being that they're playing Albany State, I, I expect it to be a lot to a little <laughs> right now. Albany State's been a common opponent for a lot of GSC teams. There's another handoff inside. Another chance for Mason as he gets dragged down before he can really get rolling on that one. We are down to a minute to play. 69 nothing the score here in this one. There will be a lot of good stuff to talk about coming out of this game, and maybe we may have seen. We'll have to wait and See what Coach Pete Shinnick decides, a changing of the guard when it comes to the kicking game. Austin Williams struggled tonight. Will he get another opportunity during practice the next week, or have we seen a freshman in Alex Virgilio step in and become the kicker? And they're going to call the dogs off here. Sam Vaughn's going to take a knee. V formation. Yeah, victory formation is in effect, and Sam scored that touchdown. I'm sure he's going to feel good. J.C. Robles threw his first touchdown pass as an Argo. He's going to feel good. Austin Reed, another big game. Offense clicking. Defense is going to throw the fourth shutout in UWF history up on the board. 
as the clock ticks down to 10 seconds now. So 69 nothing will be the final in this one. And, and Jamie, this is one of those you know, things where you look at this game and fans will be excited. They got to see a lot of points. We, we enjoyed calling <laughs> all the big plays that were happening in this game. But what does it really mean for you moving forward? Is it, it what do you what is the value that you can kind of take out of this game? I mean, you you have some things you have to clean up from the first quarter, but the, I mean, you have learning moments and you have a team that's cleaned up a lot of stuff and looked good in that second quarter on forward. And um, I mean, you learned, and this team continues to gel. And if they get used to Austin Reed being at the helm at quarterback, and he's looked great. And you come to find your running backs, and what works for you, and Anthony Johnson is finding his form, and it continues to be healthy. Uh, it's, it's 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 a lot of great things, and the defense continues to look great. I think that those are the standout things for me tonight. Are defensively the play of the secondary. We did see that one play that was called back uh, for some penalties or some some sloppy tackling. But then after that getting guys to the ground quickly, pressure up front, the ability to come off the corners and Gail Laurent and Quentin Peoples and some guys like that, you know, making that happen. And we're going to catch up with Coach Shinnick here in a, me in a minute after they do the alma mater down here. And then the other thing to me that really stood out is the dominant play of this offensive line. We saw that second half against Shorter last week, but not really with the effect of running the ball that we saw right. this week. Again, taking to a – you know, count the opponent, if you will, but just able to get it going. 350, 351 passing, 222 rushing. That is solid no matter the opponent. So you're talking about 600 yards of total offense at roughly tonight. And then just the one turnover, which almost irrelevant because it was the first offensive play of the game. So really a, a very clean game as far as protecting yeah. the football. Yeah, yeah. definitely. And uh, you take away that one turnover at the beginning of the ball game, and the offense played a pretty clean game. And uh, I know they'll clean that up going into next week. They'll have to with a with a tougher opponent coming in in Mississippi College. But yeah, 573 total yards of offense. Um, you have to be happy about that if you're if you're a head coach. How about that other column, Jamie? When we look at the defense, you don't see minus 12 rushing. Some of that's the sack numbers in late, but they never allowed the running game to get untracked. Yeah, I mean, any opponent, in any, in, I'm sure any defense will take that any day. When you have a negative next to that number, that's going to that's gonna excite that defensive room. All right, we are, we are ready to catch up with Brian Henry and Coach Pete Shinnick after a big win. Brian. Thanks, Will. And so, Coach, I know you're an offensive guy, but I'm going to start with defense because you got to bring it every single play on defense. And, and you just put up the fourth shot in school history. How, how do you feel about that? Uh, great game. We executed it. Really set up all the points, I think, in the second half because really the offense didn't have to go very far. And your offense, you spread it around. I mean, you like to do that, and all your quarterbacks got in on the action tonight. Yeah, fun to see uh, all those guys contribute and get a touchdown somehow, some way. Uh, so that was exciting. And next week, you got Mississippi College here, back to conference play. What uh, what can we expect on that tough, tough opponent? No, always tough to play the Gulf South Conference. Uh, we need everybody back here cheering us on, making this the uh, greatest home uh, area in uh, Division II football. So we need people here. Okay, thank you. Good luck next week. Thank you. Back up to you, Will. Thank you, Brian, and thank you, Coach Shinnick. Crack a smile there a little bit, right, Coach? Now he's feeling good after this one as he, he talks to his family after that one. So, again, 69 to nothing is the final score in this one. Big win for UWF in the home opener. Jamie Smith and I will be with you next week as well. Six o'clock kick, Mississippi College coming in to Blue Wahoo Stadium to take on the Argos and Gulf South Conference game. It should be a good one. We thank you for watching here on Cox Sports TV. Our radio broadcast will continue coming up next with our post game show on ESPN Pensacola. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching football here on the UWF Sports Network. So Moterran Technologies uh, provides